Hey, Undisputed listeners, before we start the show, I wanted to tell you about our brand new Fox Sports app and website, foxsports.com. Reimagine for the modern sports fan. Go ahead, download the new app right now. You don't even have to pause this episode. Every day on the new app and website, you'll see the top stories in sports, plus a rich world of written content, videos, social media, and analytics to give you a 360-degree view of the most important stories of the day. Streaming live TV has never been so easy or elegant. Every Fox Sports game, including all pregame and postgame shows, are just one click away. For the extra invested fan, we also go deep with real-time wagering lines, trending prop bets, win probability, and key player projections. Download the new Fox Sports app or visit www.foxsports.com now. Let's start the show. Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Jenny Taft. This podcast is the full show from today's episode of Undisputed from start to finish. They've got a busy slate, so skip Shannon. Let's get to it. Good morning. Welcome to Undisputed. We are live from LA. I'm Jenny Taft here with Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp, guys. Hope you had a great weekend. How we doing? Yeah, it was a great weekend. Great weekend. Santa bringing us something special. Mm. <laughs> really? All I got to ask is... How about them Cowboys? Oh. The 49ers. We are back, baby. We're back in second place. We're just one game behind that sorry Washington outfit. You Here we put, come. You will put some Here we over. come. Home playoff game. Who knew? I We're bet really it's over. Yeah. It's over Sunday. We are going to do that. Sunday. Okay. Well, as long as Skip got his Cowboys in, I actually <sighs> want to talk about a different guy called Mr. Tom Brady because he found himself trailing the Falcons. 24 to 7 in the third quarter before mounting a comeback. Brady and the Bucks ended up going on a 24 to 3 run that was capped off by a 46 yard touchdown pass to Antonio Brown. Brady finished the game with 390 yards, two touchdowns, and no turnovers. So, Shannon, what percent of the credit does Brady deserve for this win? What percent of the blame does he do- does he deserve for putting him in this situation? Now, see, I'm not going to let you kill the monster that you mm. created and then play super. I, I haven't spoken. Why is that? Is that why I didn't say your name? <laughs> what you, you, you said me. No, I did not. No, I did I not. I haven't spoken. I did not say Skip Bayless. <laughs> when I want you to speak, I would have dressed you Skip or Skip Bayless. Okay. I am not going to let someone write the narrative. They kill the monster that they created and become superhero. That's not how it works. But in this situation, he played as well in the second half as he played poorly in the second half. So he created this situation that he ended up digging them, he and the offense, digging them out of. But I thought, you know what, Skip, to be honest with you, I I give 50-50 because I thought the first half the defense didn't get enough stops and, and Matt Ryan should have had more points on the board than 17. But the defense bowed their backs in the second half. And what could have gotten out of hand is that they made timely plays. They made just enough plays to allow Brady to, like, get on this rhythm. And that's what happens when you have the momentum. How much separation can you get when you have the momentum between you and the team? And the Falcons should have known this scenario because they had a 28-3 lead against this guy and wasn't able to create enough separation. But, Skip, I mean, the Bucks had 60 total yards in the first half, five first downs, and four real possessions. And the, the difference was they got pressure on Brady in the first half. They didn't get that same amount of pressure in the second half. And when they tried to dial that, whatever pressure that they dialed up, give Bruce Arians, give um, the O.C., Mm-hmm. Uh, Byron Leftwich. Mm-hmm. Give him, give them credit, Skip, because they made the proper adjustments. Every time they came with a blitz, something quick was coming out. They hit Godwin. They hit Mike Evans. They hit Scotty Turner. A.B. was there. They always ha- had an answer for whatever the Falcons tried to do in the second half. So I want to give them credit. So if you want Brady to get some credit, I'm going to give him 50% of the credit, 50% of the blame. I'm going to give that same to the defense. But I thought he played well in the second half, 320 yards, three touchdowns in the second half, and got them back in the game. So, back in the game. They actually won the game. So, that's where I'm at. Fitty, fitty. Mm, Okay. I am here to tell you that in all my years of watching professional football, I have never seen two halves back-to-back by the same team like that happened yesterday. At the end of the first half, I was ready to proclaim on this show, sitting in this seat, 
that no matter their playoff chances, that team didn't belong in the playoffs. And by the end of the second half, I'm now ready to sit here and proclaim in this seat to you, this team could win it all this no, year. No, they can't. Yes, they, they can. The only way they can get past the NFC is if somebody upsets New Orleans. They can't beat New Orleans. They can't because Tom Brady can't we'll withstand see. that pressure. Skip, you saw we'll it twice. See. What did your eyes tell you? You say you're an eye test guy. What do your eyes tell you when they match up with the Saints? What my gut tells me is there's <laughs> one man in sports I do not bet against, and it's Thomas Edward Patrick Brady Jr. <sighs> You talk about Pavarotti at the Sydney Opera House. This was the Mona Lisa in the second half. I, I have never seen him better. Owner. I've never seen any. I, I, this guy. The Falcons? He, he just keeps doing it. The Falcons. Shannon, they're dead in the water. The they're Fal down 17 to nothing. And this man comes out and says, no, I got this. And I'm going to give him 90% of the credit because okay. they were horrendous in the first half. They allowed they? Yeah, the, the the defense is horrendously <laughs> bad. The, so the defense allowed Matt Ryan to go 23 of 31 for 235 in the first half. They couldn't stop him. They batted down two balls in the end zone at the end of the half or it would have been 21 to nothing and it was 17 to nothing. And here came Brady out of halftime. I don't know if he gave a psycho Tom speech at halftime and said, that's enough of this, you know what? He came out and said, watch this. And he said it to his defense, and he said it to Matt Ryan and the Falcons, and he said it to his offensive line, and he said it to all his receivers, watch this. And if we could see the throws he started making, he just starts throwing lasers. And it started to that man, Antonio Brown, who caught the last bomb to win the game, but he throws one right up the chute to Antonio Brown for a quick 20. And then here he goes to Cameron Bright. That's just a gunshot over the middle, and it's like, wait. Wait, who is this? Oh, wait a second. This is vintage Tom Brady to Mike Evans over the middle. That almost scored. And then Fournette got the one yard. And all of a sudden you say, wait a second. It's 17 to 7. But what did the defense do? It's hapless. It's hopeless. And Matt Ryan then goes 75 yards in seven plays to make it 24 to 7 with 734, mid third quarter. Mm -hmm. They're they're down 17 again. And Brady said, No, I got this. And here he came again. 26 yards to Mike Evans. And then 24 yards to Mike Evans. And then he hits Chris Godwin a little underneath four-yard slant for the touchdown. Okay. And all of a sudden it's 24 to 14. And okay. I'm thinking, uh-oh. And then his defense finally starts to get the message. Wait, our, our guy, our golden god is back. He, he's turned back into vintage Tom Brady. And would you believe in the second half alone, Tom Brady threw for 320 yards? It's the most yards in a second half this whole football season by any quarterback. It was only second to Mahomes' first half against that defense at Tampa. But let me ask you a question. Think Skip. about that. He threw for 320 yeah, in the second half. I, I'm thinking about it. Skip. Really? My God. Now, hold on. Now, I know, let, let's just, I'm, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to visualize this, and maybe we're talking about a different Atlanta Falcons team. This is not the same Atlanta Falcons team that had a 29-10 lead over the Cowboys and lost that game 40-39. Mm. I know this is not the same Falcons team that had a 16-point lead over the Chicago Bears and lost that game after they benched their quarterback mm. and brought Nick Foles in. Mm. This is not the same Falcons team that had a six-point lead with 40 seconds left and lost that game. This is a different Falcons team, right? It was the same Falcons okay. team that held Brady and company to 60 yards in the first oh, half. 60 hold on, yards? Hold on, wait a minute. Are hold you on, kidding? Yeah, hold on. He throws for 320 on, in the second minute, half? Wait a minute. You said his, you said his, hold on, wait a minute, just for a second, just for me, just appease me. You said his defense was pathetic in the first half, mm -hmm. yet you just said Tom Brady had 60 yards and five first down, and you up here praising him. So mm. was he not pathetic in the mm. first half? Yeah, I told you they didn't look like a playoff team in the first half. Okay. But what, what is he known for? He's known for second halves. He's known for fourth quarters. He's known for overtimes. He is the comeback king. He is the clutchest player I've ever seen in any sport. And I take it even beyond Michael Jordan because Tom has had so many more chances in big games and big moments than Michael had in his fairly short career. Well, this is what we saw. We saw the tale of two halves. We saw one half where they put pressure on him, and the second, the first half, they got pressure. They sacked him. They brought safety. They brought slot blitzes. They brought corner blitzes. They got pressure. They brought line, uh, gut blitzes. They got him on the ground. But what we see with Tom Brady, what seems to be real, the reoccurring theme is that 
Look at when they've lost, and you look at the teams that beat them, what did they do? The Rams, what did they do? Relentless pressure. Now, if you think Tom Brady could have survived that onslaught mm -hmm. that Mahomes ran the gauntlet through yesterday, mm -hmm. you're sadly mistaken. Mm -hmm. You know good and well because you saw it on a Sunday night. They had to call timeout to kick a field goal. So you can stop this notion. Relentless pressure, and Atlanta couldn't. Skip, don't make Atlanta seem like they're a playoff team. Like, they, come on, don't do that. Mm. I'm, I'm giving Tom credit. Tom was unbelievable in the second half, but he created the monster. Mm. Now you want him to be the superhero because he slayed the monster? Mm. He created it. Mm. 320 passing 60 yards. In the, in first the half. second half, so by a man that so my man Shannon Sharp said four years ago, Tom, it's time to go home. What about the three years? years ago, Tom, it's time to go home. Two years ago, Tom, what, it's time to go what, home. What about one year ago, Tom? That's it. What that's about enough. Skip? He went to a team that's loaded. The problem is he can't carry you anymore. Mm -hmm. He needs Mike Evans, Chris Godwin. He needs all that. All I'm saying is this. You was talking about the 320. What about the 60 yards in the first half? Mm. Does that carry equal weight, yes or no? No, it doesn't keep, <laughs> carry equal weight to the third and fourth quarters of a game that you were down 24 to 7 in midway third quarter. You just told me. It's almost on par with that Super Bowl that he pulled off in that same building. It's yeah. just almost on par given the, the lack of continuity, given COVID, given pandemic, given so, 2020. And and he just pulled so it all together. So he's the only one that had to go through that. No other team has had to go through that. How many quarterbacks change teams after 20 years? How about oh one? Give me another one. Did Patrick Mahomes change teams this no. year? I don't think so. No. Did Aaron Rodgers? No. I don't think so. But nobody had nobody had training nobody mm. had training camps. Mm. Nobody had mini camps. You see rookies come in. Justin Herbert's playing unbelievable. That Skip, don't do that. Don't try to see what you try to do is that you mentioned all these things like Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are the only ones playing under this scenario mm. when you know that not to be the case. Mm. Now you just told me last week. When I tried to heap praise on Mahomes, you said Mahomes put them in that situation against Miami with that poor play in the first half. Mm -hmm. Now, all of a sudden, the roles are reversed, and you hyping Tom Brady. Well, I saw Mahomes throw for 359 yards in the first half against Tampa, but in the last three quarters, I saw Tom Brady outplay Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, Tom Brady had not played mm -hmm. Matthew Mahomes all year long. Mm -hmm. That's why there's a, this a two-man mm -hmm. race for the MVP. You know, you it's funny you bring that up. Tom Brady's now up to 32 touchdown passes, and Patrick's got 36. So, so it's how starting, many, how starting many, to go like this. How many it? interceptions? Mm -hmm. 11. How many have Mahomes got? Mm -hmm. Five. I, okay. How many yards does Tom Brady has? Who's his coordinator, Patrick Mahomes? Oh, it's that. Andy Reid. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait, is this not his fourth year in that whoa, system? Whoa, 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 whoa. This is his, we're, we're just two-thirds of the way through the first year in not, this not, not, Bruce Arian system. Now, now all of a sudden, we saw my offensive coordinator who's calling his play. You just said he was the GOAT. You said, no, you told oh, me. I, I didn't say it. It's just a fact. Hold on. You told me all these years coaching didn't matter. Help, you said it's Tom out. Brady. Okay, you have told me all year you see decline in Tom Brady. Did you see any decline in the second half? Skip. Is, has he lost arm strength? Yeah. Has he lost nerve? Has he yes. lost poise? Yes! Hello, I'm glad you Ooh. said that. Has he lost nerve? Hey, Jim, can you roll the tape? You tell me, has he lost nerve on this mm -hmm. throw right here? Jim, roll the tape right quick. Now, I know you're not going to be able to see it. Mm -hmm. It's a Chris Scott. No, 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 no. no. I, don't know I, don't, I don't need to talk. I need the voice over. I want the people to see from the end zone. You tell me, has he lost nerve? You see what he did? That's losing nerve. Oh, I see. Oh, I think yeah. That's self preservation at 43. <laughs> Not self preservation. What, what, what quarterback takes a shot in the face like that? <laughs> wait, Not, wait, who won the game? Not who that's self the game? No, no, hold on. Who we put up 31. Skip, skip. We've already established that's why we leave because Tom Brady, we wouldn't have led, we wouldn't have led with this if Tom didn't come back. You said, has he lost nerve? I show you a play in which he's lost nerve. Now you say it's self preservation. I just need you to pick a side. Now, by the way, it. quick point of order. We have have often led this show when Tom Brady stinks it up. So don't give me that he's, garbage. He's he stuck it up don't in the give first me that. half. Don't give me that. Did he stick it up in the first half? Yes do, or no? Do they look like a team that could win the NFC? Yeah, Skip, they let do. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. If you, you saw New Orleans yesterday, how many times? Skip, you just saw five weeks ago what New Orleans did to him on a Sunday night. If, and they if, was more relentless. If 
Tampa Bay or Tampa Bay had caught New Orleans with Drew Brees stinking like he did yesterday, coming off 11 fractured ribs. He should not have been in the game yesterday. And if that's just luck, that's Good. fate, that's injury gods dictated. Let there be Patrick Mahomes on the day Drew Brees is forced back in the lineup prematurely. Way to go, Patrick. Congratulations. Well, this, says, this, this says more about what mm. they think of Taysom Hill mm. than Drew Brees. Okay. We'll get to that at another. Yes. I'm sure we'll talk about we're, that later. We're going to do that very quickly. Quickly here but on Skip, the, show. the fact of them, but, but here's the thing: you look at what they did defensively. Mm. That front, four, Skip, that was four man pressure. They weren't bringing extra people on Mahomes. And the only way, Skip, you know Tom Brady. Skip, you saw what they did to him. You came out here and you was hurt. What they did to him, they beat the brakes off Tampa. Mm -hmm. That defense is relentless. Mm -hmm. And you think he can get out of what Mahomes got out of yesterday? Three times is the charm. I just hope they get to see them somewhere along the trail, even in New Orleans. I would love that to, what goes around comes all the way back around. They got thrown into the fire in game one at New Orleans. It was the most unfair scheduling I've ever seen in all my 40 odd years. That's Tom Brady. What, what's, no. what's, what's about that? Throw them into the fire. Throw them to the wolves right out of the chute <laughs> when you don't have any preseason and, and virtual OTA. Way to go. Well, Congratulations. Well, if that's the case, then the Lakers should be the Lakers Lakers should start with Sacramento. Mm, yeah. Why not? Because that's the best. Hold on, Skip. Oh. I, I just want you to help, help me this. Is this LeBron's first year here? No, hold on. So. Hold on. Tom, Tom Brady, 21 years. Mm. You told me he to go. Now, all of a sudden, it's because of the coaching staff, and he's trying. <sighs> coaching didn't matter. For the longest, coaching didn't matter to Tom because he to go. <laughs> and what I loved the most was Tom did force Antonio Brown into the mix at 6-2, and two, when a lot of people were saying, boy, this looks like the best team in football. The defense looked like the best defense in the NFC at that point. And Tom said, you know what? I'm shooting the moon. I know we're going to have to pay now so we don't have to pay later because I want us to have Antonio Brown in sync, in rhythm by the time we hit the playoffs. And yesterday, who caught the bomb to seal it? It was, it was, a, it was a great play design. They, had a, they do a lot of stack formations. <laughs> And they got Antonio a free release on a guy that I don't know what he was thinking. I, maybe he thought he had help, but he just let Antonio just run right up free release, and it was a touchdown. The safety jumped Godwin's underneath route, and it left Antonio right. single, and Antonio ran right by him. Skip. Thank you. But in a situation— Did the ball get there? I think it got there by old noodle arm. I don't know how he got it there, but he got it there. When you look at the Falcons, there are plays within the game— that when you have the difference in winning and losing. You mentioned one of the plays. Jim, if we have that, could we show... Matt Ryan had two opportunities, Skip, to really put this game away. And I don't know why he chose to throw the ball in this manner and not drive it. Here's the first one. Skip, this is a touchdown. Just drive the ball. All he has to do is just drive it. Hmm. Just throw the... I mean, look at, look at Gaines, how he's just floating back there. Thank you, Carlton Davis, who, by the way, got hurt. And, and look at this, Skip. Right, right, Thank just, you, Antonio Winfield. Thank you. you. Uh, Matt I, I told you, I mentioned it earlier. Either one of those throws connects. The, it's probably but, ball but game. Skip, that's 21 to nothing. Either one of those that's, throws. That's, well, actually, that would have been extra. Well, that would have been 21 nothing at the half. That's and that would have been, that been a yeah. touchdown. So we might have a tie, had to end up going overtime or something Maybe. like that. But that's the difference, Skip, is that. And you saw later in the ball game, uh, later in the ball game, Calvin Ridley, who was playing phenomenal, who's had a phenomenal year, he dropped the second down. And then on third down, it looks like they're playing cover five, what we call 22 mm -hmm. man. And Matt Ryan is wanting a back shoulder, and he runs it to get on top. And you can see Matt's like, no, that's not what we talked about in this situation. Skip, we Calvin Ridley caught 163 yards of balls. He caught 10 for 163. Would you believe it's the first Falcon to catch 150-yard-plus balls not named Julio? Yeah. Since 2012, Roddy White? Yeah, I'm not surprised. That, that's how shocking that was. That's what they were doing to that defense yesterday. Skip, <clears throat> Calvin Ridley is really good. But my thing is, is that I guarantee you, if you ask him today, he'll talk about the second down drop and the miscommunication on third down. Because, Skip, that would have kept them on the field. And the thing that you need to do when a team that has momentum is seizing momentum is that you need to keep them off the field as long as you possibly can. Mm -hmm. And then who knows? Maybe you don't get a touchdown, but maybe you get a field goal. Mm -hmm. Maybe you possess the ball five extra minutes, and now all of a sudden you've cooled them off. Mm -hmm. But they go three and out, punt the ball away, and Tom Brady comes right back down yep. the field. But in a situation like that, Skip, look, 
Give Tom his credit. He played unbelievable in the second half. And the thing is, if you can't pressure Tampa's offense, I don't know how you beat them. Mm. Because, they, uh, look, uh, um, Rojo is out with that index and, finger. And hit. that's a huge factor because right. they had little to no run game right. yesterday. Right, right. Okay. And that's the thing, though, Skip. If you – and that's – look, I don't want to sound like this. I, I'm, 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 I'm splitting the atom. But Tom, more so than any uh, – the quarterback – if you can't pressure the opposing team's quarterback, Skip, these guys have gotten too good. They'll pick you apart. And when you talk about the top five, top six guys, they'll really gut you. So with Tom, because he's not as mobile and he's not going to make the plays outside of the pocket, if you can get gas him up, you can they become very beatable. Because I told you from day one, Skip, I said, Skip, that defense can be had. And even when they were at their apex, Skip, I was going to say, Skip, I see some things that you can take advantage of. They're not as good. But they got rolling. Devin White, 12 tackles, three sacks, four tackles for loss. And even though they only got to him three times in the second half, you saw JPP start getting closer and closer. You saw Shaq Barrett start getting closer and closer. Sue started collapsing the pocket. The DB started getting tighter and tighter. And that's what they did. They start, give, give them credit. That momentum swell. Brady started playing well. And then the defense didn't come. They front run it. Mm. But I tell you what, the only chance you got, the only chance, Skip Bayless, mm. is if somebody knocks New Orleans off. Because there's no way that from Hendrickson, that number 91 Hendrickson, he kept New Orleans in the game single-handedly by himself, Skip. Eric Fisher is a Pro Bowl offensive lineman, Skip, and he couldn't do anything with him. Pat Mahomes was talking to him on the field like, bro, you got to do better. And he was talking to him. Hey, hey there was... Sometimes guys just well, have he, to know that. He nearly that caved in Mahomes' chest on a sack fumble late in the game. He got, he got collected. Yep. What if they hit Brady like that? You'll be, no, be fine. You better stop. You, you ought to stop. Skip. 43 looking like 23. Skip, and by the way, it. speaking of numbers, Tampa Bay had zero turnovers yesterday and one penalty for 10 yards. That means it's the Patriot way in Tampa Bay. See? That means, uh oh, look out, but, Bill. But, and wait a second. Whatever happened to Bill Belichick? Don't do this, Skip. Don't do this. Whatever happened, uh, they're 6 and 8, and they missed the playoffs for the. That's the worst record they've had it, since pre Brady. No, it, it, huh? it, no it's not. <laughs> They missed yeah, the playoff first half since 2008 when Brady hurt no, his No, but 6-8 yeah. and eight is oh, the yeah. worst since pr the year yeah. before Brady when they went 5-11, and 11, yeah. right? They might go 500. Mm. Whew, they looking. Mm. Skip, why do you do this? When things go well, okay, they have one penalty, that's the Patriots way. When they have eight, nine penalties, Bruce Arian doesn't have any control. He's mm. the same coach when they have one penalty as when they have nine. So why does Brady get credit when they have one penalty? It sounds like Bruce during Arian the bye week that Tom took over total control of the oh team, God. doesn't it? That's what it looks like to me. And all of a sudden, Bill Belichick looks like he's in big trouble in New England and Tampa Bay is 9-5 and five rolling into the playoffs. Skip. I would say that's big advantage, Tom Brady over Bill Belichick, Skip. wouldn't you? I, Skip, I'm not minimizing what Tampa was able to overcome. But let's not pretend they beat the 75 Steelers or the 76 Steelers mm. or the 70 Steelers or anything mm. like that, or they beat the mid-90s Cowboys. Mm. That's not what they did, mm. and you know that. In the second half, it felt like that's what they did. Skip the Falcons! Mm. Skip the Falcons. Division rival, playing much better under Raheem Morris. Am I right? Much more competitive. Skip, play, okay, you're playing better. Could you play worse? Way to go, Tom. Mm. You got this. I can't believe, Way I can't to believe go, that. Tom. But wait, we got Virtuoso. Jimmy, can you, oh, yeah. can you let somebody, Skip enjoy today? Yeah. Somebody drew sideburns on the Mona Lisa. Because uh. if that's the Mona, Mona Lisa, Lisa, she got mutton chops. Yeah. She got mutton chops. No, no mercy. What's up, Undisputed listeners? It's your boy, Shay Sharp. I wanted to tell you about my new podcast, Club Shay Shay, where we always do something before two something. Each week, I sit down with a guest for a drink and conversation, and as host and proprietor of Club Shay Shay, I've welcomed in esteemed guests such as Snoop Dogg, Floyd Money Mayweather, LeVar Ball, Isaiah Thomas, just to mention a few. Whether I'm talking to an athlete, a musician, an actor, or a lifelong friend, Club Shay Shay is a place where people share inspiring and motivational stories about their journeys to prominence. The new episode drops every Monday on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Subscribe to Club Shay Shay now and make sure you never miss a new episode. Now back to Undisputed. No mercy. The Cowboys defense showed up big against the 49ers, creating four turnovers in the 41 to 33 win. Tony Pollard racked up 132 yards from scrimmage and two touchdowns with Zeke sitting out with a calf injury. 
But the Cowboys win and every other NFC East team losing yesterday. Dallas is now second in the division, just a game behind Washington. So, Shannon, how much of a shot do you give the Cowboys to win the NFC East? Very little because the, the, the ball is still in Washington's hand. They're still dribbling it. And I know Ron Rivera is praying. Um, <clears throat> after what he's gone through, he believes he has a very strong, devout faith. But he's hoping and praying that Alex Smith calf is going to be okay. Because I think he's seen enough to realize that Dwayne Haskins is not his answer. And if Dwayne Haskins is the answer, you're asking the wrong questions. How you throw the ball 55 times and don't have 300 yards is unbeknownst to me. Um, and considering that the Giants rolled, did a number on um, Seattle in Seattle, and it just seemed like, and it, no matter how great your defense is, Skip, you can only play defense so many times. Like it's a, it's kind of like when we're going to talk about the Jalen Hurts. It's kind of an effect, Skip. We go out there drive after drive, and then you three and out, you three and out, you three and out. I get, I, I, I mean, you, you beat me down, bro. You demoralizing me. You can't give me one first down. You can't give me anything to show that we got a chance in this ball game. And as bad as they played, the defense hung around, hung around, and made a play, and they still had a chance, and they came up empty-handed. Skip, <clears throat> I look at they got Carolina, and then they travel to Philly. They beat Carolina, who's lost eight or nine, no McCaffrey. I would be surprised if they brought McCaffrey back. It doesn't make any sense. You're out of it, and why risk him um, for the last two games? So I'm going to be surprised. Matt Rule continues to say not ruling him out. Right. Yeah, okay. I think that's because he wants team, yep. he wants teams to prepare for him, knowing that he's not going to bring him back. Yep. Um, so with that being said, I believe it's Washington's division to look to win, to lose or win, however you want to phrase it, Skip. But I believe it's theirs. Win one game, that's all they have to do. They have to lose out, Cowboys have to win out in order to have any chance at this division. And I believe the Cowboys, uh, Cowboys I believe the Washington football team will win wh whenever they play Saturday or Sunday. Mm -hmm. But they'll beat the Carolina Panthers and they'll win. Give the Cowboys credit, just goes to show you how bad this division is, is that you still have a chance to win the division and you got five wins. So that just goes to show you just how pathetic the NFC East is. Oh, it might be the worst division one year in the history of the NFL. But give them credit yesterday. They played to beat a bad team. Now, Skip, before I turn it over to you, Kyle Shanahan has done an unbelievable job. John Lynch has done a great job of accumulating talent. I believe they're going to be there. They got extensions. They're going to be there. But that training staff, when you have this many knee injuries, you have this many hamstring injuries, Skip, is something going on with the way you're training these players? Because I've never seen anything like this before. Now, I played 14 years. You've covered it. And for guys to go out, I mean, every running back, can come, only come back for one game, and he has another lower leg injury again. So there's something that's being that's going on biometrically, mechanically, or how you're training them, or how the nutrition, something is going on that Cal need and the upper management need to look at to say what's going on here to cause us to have this many guys on our and this many guys hurt week after week after week. Give the Cowboys credit. Their defense was very opportunistic, but Mullins is a turnover machine. We saw that yesterday. I'm not surprised, but it just goes to show you they don't have anywhere to turn. But Washington wins this division mm. on Saturday or Sunday. Mm -hmm. Whenever they play Carolina. Sunday, 1 o'clock Eastern. Well, Washington will mm. be your NFC East title. Get your hat ready. Mm. Uh, Friday, this past Friday, <laughs> Hall of Famer Shannon Sharp predicted right here on Undisputed that Washington would beat Seattle and that Dallas would lose to San Francisco and it would be O-V-E-R over I was, yesterday. I was hoping Alex Smith would play. Okay. <laughs> so, I agree with your premise. It is still Washington's division to win or lose, however you want to look at mm -hmm. it. But I'm going to give my team, my Dallas Cowboys, now a 20% shot. That's it? Yep. Tw well, I mean, you gave no little to no. I gave, I, I'm I going up two. to 20. 2%? Because I'll be watching, I'll be with Skill. We like, when they score touchdown, okay, they got a 91% chance. The other team scores now, you got 85. So it just changed with the time. So you know what? I've never seen 100 until, like, time's off the clock. It is 100% chance to win. So I'm going to say Washington has a 98.4% chance okay. to win. Okay, I got it. If you had told me before the season started that the NFC East would come down to Carolina at Washington the week before the final week of the season, I would say you're out of your mind because I didn't see Washington coming at all. I thought it was going to be between Dallas and Philadelphia. Yes. Obviously, Dallas lost its starting court. Its two best players yesterday didn't have either Dak or Zeke yesterday. Mm -hmm. And Philly's been injury-racked and now 
Carson Wentz has lost his job to Jalen Hurts. We're going to talk more about Jalen in a moment. Mm -hmm. Jalen Hurts has become the X factor now for me in this division because the first X factor is going to be 1 o'clock next Sunday afternoon at Washington. Okay. And that is the Carolina Panthers who have lost eight of nine. But they have been game all through this losing streak because if you look closely at their results, you see that at Minnesota they lost by one point. Mm -hmm. At Kansas City, they lost by two points. Mm -hmm. That was 33 to 31. At New Orleans, they lost only by three points. That was 27-24. And then Saturday night at Green Bay, a game I watched from start to finish, they hung in and actually made a game of it at the end and lost by eight, but it was a one-score game because they could have gone I for I thought two. they were about to get blown out. It was 21-3 skip. I was like, okay, it here we like go. It. And for the record, believe it or not, after Aaron Rodgers basically campaigned for MVP last uh, there week. There you go. He no, he no, seriously. He was campaigning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, be nice because, boy, in 2016, I didn't even get a sniff. He did get a sniff. Yeah. Okay, so he's campaigning last week. Too cool. He's sitting back. You, you can almost see him sipping his fingers of tequila. <laughs> and he goes out in the second half against the Carolina Panthers at Lambeau on a Saturday night single solo stage game. And he threw for a grand total of 44 yards in the second half and got sacked three times by a team that you say can't they, rush the passer. They can't. I hate to say okay. the can't numbers rush the can't. passer, and Aaron got sacked three times. And at least the Panthers showed me some fight. Mm -hmm. They got a college coach named Matt Rule from Baylor. I don't know how he got the job, but at least they're having sort of that old college try in right. this year. Yes, yes. And when I look at these three receivers, DJ Moore's caught 1,055 yards yeah. worth of balls. That's pretty good. And Robbie Anderson's caught 1,017 yards worth of balls. Yes. That's that's pretty good. Yes. And Curtis Samuel can run by anybody yep. when he gets the shot. Yep. And he has 627 yards receiving. So you have three receivers who can do damage. Mike Davis has been hit, hit and miss. He's right. been okay. But he gives them some credibility right. at the running back without C-Mac. Christian. You got to come back and save me. Man, go ahead. You owe me one. Come on, Christian. Just, just do it. Do it for the good of football. Just for integrity. Just come back and play. Just so it'll be a level playing field at Washington. If you, if you look at the teams, the last time I think they played Tampa, Teddy Bridgewater ended up getting knocked out of the ball game. Mm -hmm. and they end up having to bring the backup in. But if you look at all the teams that they played, for the most part, they don't get after the quarterback like that front seven from Washington came. Mm -hmm. Now, Teddy Bridgewater is going to have to be on his best behavior. He will. Now, you're right. They have some receivers, DJ Moore and uh, Robbie Anderson. Those guys can, and, and Samuels can get 4-3-2, yep. four, three, four, three, mm -hmm. I think, at the combine. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, yes, they can make plays, but and, how and, much time? And Teddy is one of those those guys, he just fights. He just He's not the most talented right. guy, but he will fight you to the death. Right. So I'm looking for a fight, and I'm looking for, thank you for saying this, all the pressure is on the home team at yeah, Washington. Yes, uh, this, this is a Jack Del Rio game. The can, defensive coordinator, Jack. Can they handle the pressure? Because all of a sudden, and again, you say, is it Dwayne Haskins or Alex Smith? I don't care because the last time I saw Alex Smith at San Francisco before he hurt his calf, he had a QBR of nine. So he wasn't exactly lighting it up. No, but Skip, I just think that sometimes there are things, even though a guy might be better, a team might have more confidence than the other guy. I just think the team has more confidence. With Skip, Alex is never going to be the Alex again. The mere fact that he's even playing is a miracle and an accomplishment in and of itself. With that withstanding, I just feel that the team has more confidence that they can get the job done with him under center mm -hmm. under Dwayne Haskins. Now, they might not have a choice. Okay. Because, like I said, Skip, it ain't, ain't like a whole, it's not a whole lot of lower leg down there. You're talking about his calf. I agree. Okay. Now, back to my team. Again, you know how much I love me some Jalen Hurts. We're going to talk about him in a moment. He's the X Factor. He plays at Jerry World. Oh, y'all got no, yeah. Come on, yeah. Jalen Hurts. That's yeah. my guy. That's my guy, Jay Hurts, baby. But that's the late afternoon game, so they're <laughs> going to know the outcome. So the pressure could shift completely onto the Cowboys. If, if somehow Carolina pulls off the set of the year, if somehow they're already uh, all of a sudden in a position to tie Washington at the top, and obviously they have no tiebreaker with Washington because Washington absolutely humiliated and annihilated Both them. Times. Both times. Just absolutely just... Love it. Just bushwhack shell shot. Yeah, that's what happened. Okay, so given that... Late afternoon versus Jalen Hurts. You want to talk about my emotions mix because I'm going to have a hard time moving <laughs> against Jalen Hurts. But my team has won two straight games. And for my team, which for a while looked like maybe the worst team ever, especially on defense, especially against the run, 
This is a huge achievement late in the year to actually win two straight games. Because if you look at what happened yesterday, Kyle Shanahan can really dial up the play. So what did he do, Mr. Sharp? He did. He, he put up 458 yards of offense yes. at Jerry World. Yes. My team only had 291. Let that sink in. Yeah, think about this. They ran 81 plays to my team's 58 plays. Time of possession was 35 minutes to 25 minutes in favor of San Francisco. Yes. The 49ers did run, Mostert got hurt later in the second half, but but they did run for 150 yes. to my team's 87 with no Zeke and just Tony Pollard, right? Yep. And guess what? My team scored 41 points. How did my team do that? Four turnovers. Four turnovers, and the, the real score of that game was 4-0. to zero Yes. Because my team did not turn it over. Yeah. And right away, my team... I'm not saying they forced these first two turnovers, but at least they benefited right. from two quick turnovers if we could see those quickly. This is like the story of the year for me is that my team actually benefited from a punt fumble. He fumbled and we recovered it and immediately took it right home for seven to nothing. Yeah. And then here we go again, sack fumble, your man turnover machine, Nate. And <laughs> Nate that, Yep, and guess who did that? It was Demarcus Lawrence. He yep. laid down the law yesterday, yep. and all of a sudden we take it right home thanks to Tony Pollard. And I'm not saying he's better than Zeke, but at least he gave us a little well, burst. He play, well, he play, you might burst. not be better than Zeke. He's playing better than Zeke. Okay. You can say that. You, you can say that when, when you can run for 63 and catch for 60-odd yards, mm -hmm. then, then if you give me 120-ish combined yards, I'm like, I'll take right. it because I don't see it. And obviously he capped off the scoring with a, what was it? A 40 yard run? Yeah, 40 on the head. Yeah, yep. right on the nose. Skip, but but okay. let that sink in for a second. I mean, you still gave up 150 yards rushing. We did. Uh, they had 300, you gave up 300, over 300 through the air, and you won the game because you created those turnovers. Okay. If Nick, if Nick, if you have two turnovers, you lose that game. Okay. Listen, fourth quarter, I saw two sights for sore eyes that I haven't seen all year. The game, it's a it's a teeter-totter. Yeah. It's a seesaw. We're going back and forth, and it's 27 to 24, and all of a sudden, I get two. The, if we can see what happened in the fourth quarter, I get two interceptions. Who, who knew this was coming? And listen, I told you before, Donovan Wilson, he came back yesterday from injury. He's a player. They've got a, a safety they can trust now, a, a, a thumper. And then the other one goes to, that's the first one to Donovan yeah. Wilson. Now, that's a play. That's a hell of a play. That's yeah, a when, when, when do you see my team make a play like that? And here's but, Anthony but Brown. One. Anthony Brown, thank you. Skip. Okay, I, he's just blind. He went blind, but, but still, <laughs> my guy actually caught the football. Skip, there's nothing to he hold, caught skip, it skip, and skip, ran with it. Skip, you know there's nothing to hold the backside uh, safety. Uh, the tight end blocks. Uh, there's nobody uh, to I that got side. It, I got it, but we did it. We caught it. How, how many of those have we dropped this year? So all of a sudden, my team is starting to look like a football team. And if I can see one more play, Andy Dalton is not great, but he's not bad. So he makes one play. That, that helped that, that put them ahead 24 to 17. If we could see this, th th this is a scramble rollout throw. Watch, this that's is on the run. Throw. This is a throw. That's a heck of a throw. My man CD, that's, it doesn't get any better than that. Maybe he had Dalton throw. Schultz on the next play for, for a that's touchdown. That. Mm -hmm. But that's look at this. Throw. Okay, that's his best throw of the day by far. He barely threw for over 200 yards. Yeah. But if you can make some of those throws, yeah. my team's good enough to beat Philly at home and good enough to go up to New York on the last game and beat the Giants. Hold on. Good enough to win out, Hold win on. four straight. I, I just want to make sure I'm hearing you correctly. Yes, you are. So you're, you're, you're patting your chest. Your mm -hmm. defense played well. So how much of a credit are you giving Mike Nolan? Mm. None. One in spite of him. No, don't do this. Can you do it? Just that? a bunch of guys getting together saying, you know what? Hell with him. Let's just go play. Oh Let's just go Skip, play. Why would you do Let's that? Just go play. Skip, why would you do that? They gave up 458 yards, but they forced four turnovers. 458. They, they again. My, Kyle Shanahan ran wild on them. 150 yards rushing, which was predictable, right? So you're not gonna give him none. Anything. He's gone. He's gone. Oh, my goodness. I can't We're good. believe you. I can't believe you, Skip. He might have already been replaced internally, and they're just not admitting it. <laughs> I mean, he calls up, dials up the defense, yep. has the guys in position yep. to get turnovers, and now you don't want to give him any nope, credit. No, none. Thank you. Zero? Next like, question. Not even a, a, a little bit? No. Oh, mm -hmm. all right. Okay, you, ought be, well, you ought to be ashamed mm -hmm. of yourself, Skip. You should be proud of myself, and I'm proud of my team. Way to go. <laughs> Proud of your team, Cowboys, yeah. okay, yes. proud of your team. They got it done, but unfortunately, guys, Drew Brees, well, it was a difficult return. He did.
you know, miss several weeks with broken ribs, but it just wasn't enough to help the Saints avoid their second straight loss. Breeze completed just 15 of 34 passes for 234 <laughs> yards, three touchdowns, and a pick. But on the other side, Patrick Mahomes had just over 250 yards through the air and three touchdowns in the 32-29 to Chiefs win. So, Shannon, was this more about how good Mahomes was or how bad Breeze was? This is all about Mahomes. Mm. And we see the difference in a week, what a difference a week make. Skip, where was that new, where was that defense last week against the Eagles? Did you see what that did? You, did you see them get after Patrick Mahomes? Did you see what they were doing? They were relentless. That secondary locked people up. It's like, no, you're getting nothing cheap, nothing deep. We pressure with four man, Jordan, Rankins, Hendrickson. Those guys were uh, 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 92. They were just coming and coming and coming. But Mahomes was outstanding, Skip. Sometimes mm. you can call the right defense. And what makes, these, what makes a quarterback really, really great, Skip? I call the play. Two jet plank or drive. Okay, we drop back, five step, back foot here, boom. We take the drive route, we take Shannon on the basic cross, or we take TD on the check down. Mm. That's not there. John has to scramble around. In other words, Skip, he has to get off script. It's hard to say there have been very many people better at getting off script than 15. Skip, he was sensational yesterday. I don't know any other quarterback that would have won that game under that kind of duress other than him because he's doing things right now. There have been very few people to play that position that possess the tools and can do what he can do, Skip. Let's just take a just a look. Skip, I don't want to go back and relive this. I kind of want to do. But just watching some of the things that he was doing. There have been very few people, Skip, and you've covered this game a long time, and you can, I'm probably going to go on one finger that says a guy that can make all the plays that we saw with Mahomes. Jim, roll this tape right quick. Skip, look at this right here. How many guys you think in the history of the game could have made this play? Look at this. Look at uh, That's a rope. Mm -hmm. Side him. It's a nice play. It, oh, that, that, that's all I get, a nice play. Mm -hmm. Now, you talk about Andy Dalton. You had Andy Dalton rolling. And look at this play. Look at this, Skip. That's on the money. Mm. That's on the money. Mm. Look at this, Skip. There might be two guys in the history of, in the NFL that could have made this. Mm -hmm. you, I thought he was throwing it away. Mm. I did, too. He said, you know what, Aaron Rodgers, I saw what you did last year when I was out. You did that to my team in my place. I'm going to do it to New Orleans here and show you that. But I'm going to make it harder. I'm going to roll the opposite way to my less, dom my less dominant hand. Mm -hmm. And look at this, Skip. Look at mm -hmm. that touch. Great catch by Mikko Harp. Skip, was? look at this right here. 22 can't even believe he's going to throw it. Skip, he don't even die because he ain't finna throw this. Mm. There's no way he go. He threw that ball. Do, do you realize how good a catch that was? No, 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 no. Seriously, me. seriously, do you? It was a great catch, but who would have thrown it? 22 can't even believe he threw this ball. He can't, he wasn't getting skipped. He said, look at this, Skip. This look like Nebraska, Oklahoma. Mm. The option. Mm. Yeah, look up through that thing, my homeboy. Mm. Look at this, Skip. That, that's old Nebraska, 78 in Nebraska. And look at this here. Look at this. Look at this. Don't. Mm. That's your MVP. He had, that's a, the, he had a pretty good game. I all I know is this is what I know. That defense right there, your guy the first game of the season had a 37 QBR. Mm. The second game of the season, he put five on it. He mm. had a five QBR with three interceptions and was sacked how many times? You and I both know if New Orleans does not get knocked off, Tampa not beating them mm. because Brady can't move well enough like this kid. Mm. This kid was a skip. 254 with that pressure, three mm. touchdowns, no turnover. Mm. He, and guess what? New Orleans guy's going to get the ball back. Mm. I tweeted, mm. Mahomes throwing this ball. Mm. If y'all think he's just going to run the time, run time out and just call time out so mm. they use their time out, Mahomes boy throwing this ball because Andy Reid got the utmost confidence in him. Mm. And what did he do, Skip Bayless? Mm. Ain't no running into the line and just make him use a timeout. Mm. Oh, no. I trust you. Mm. That's your MVP, Skip. So what was his QBR yesterday after 72. all, all that, that tape that you showed? 72. Well, you would think, you know, I saw Baker Mayfield last night had a QBR of 98.3. I guess they really skill. Right. I saw Jalen Hurts in his first ever pro start. His first ever start shred this same defense last week at Philadelphia. Oh. Shred it. Run through it. Throw so through Jaylen it. So Jalen Hurts better than Mahomes. No, I'm just saying okay. that's the defense that's not playing at the level it was against Tom Brady. Same skip. defense. Skip. 73 QBR. Skip. And what was the final score after all that tape that you showed? 
It was a three-point game. Would you believe, little known fact, that my homeboy's team has now gone six straight games without covering a single point spread. They're not exactly steamrolling through this league. They just keep barely hanging Still. on by the cliche skin of their teeth. What I don't know that your teeth have any skin on it, but but whatever, I'm going to use the but cliche because everybody knows what it means. Skin of their teeth. But Skip, you see what's happening. They're jumping out to these big leagues. They go on a 30, they go on a 30 to 10 mm. run. They go on a 30 nothing run against my uh, against Miami. Mm. Look at what they did. And so teams get close back in the ball games, but at mm. the end of the day, point spread, cover or not, did you win? That's mm. all I need to know. Did you win? Yes or no? Because mm. Tampa Bay didn't cover yesterday. So would you believe that Drew Brees rushed back, forced back into the lineup by Sean Payton in desperation because he's not quite sold on Taysom Hill? Quite. Would you believe that Drew Brees had a QBR yesterday of 24 on a scale 0 to 100, which is just pathetic by Drew Brees standards? Yeah. And you caught a huge break. Patrick Mahomes caught a huge break because I thought we'd see a whole lot of Taysom Hill packages. I thought Drew would be split out occasionally. I thought he'd come off the field occasionally and they'd let Taysom go a couple of plays. I did not see it at all. I saw Taysom in a random couple of plays. Yeah, like three or four plays. Little, little to no impact on the game. Right. And Drew got off to a horrendous start. He had a little hot patch uh, early sort of second half. Mm -hmm. But w when push came to shove, it just looked like he wasn't right. It looked like he was out of sync. It looked like he was off rhythm. Well, well it looked like a guy that's been, out of, that's been away for, still for a month. That is correct. I mean, it's hard to just the, – the, the, there are very, very few guys. I mean, yeah, yeah, we saw Mahomes be out two games, two and a half games, yeah. and come in and throw for 400 yards against Tennessee. But more times than not, it takes you a game to readjust to the speed of the game. And get, get, uh, this was the best that I've seen Kansas City defense play against a top-flight offense mm. in a long time, mm. especially for the entirety of the game. Now, I don't know what Marcus Robinson was thinking. I knew Skip, the moment he caught this punt and he started running laterally, mm. I said, you watch this joker form of this ball. Mm. Now, they got very lucky, Skip, because it was a touchdown gift wrap. Can we see that play? It's Alex Anzalone, <laughs> who's a very good linebacker yeah, while playing yeah. special teams. And Alex! Alex! Alex, it's, it's on a silver right platter. Right. Just fall on it. How do you whiff on that? He whiffed. He whiffed on a silver what, platter what fumble recovery. He, 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 what you got to do, you're supposed to like fall on the side and, and scoop pull. it. Yep. He jumped on top of the ball. And it squirted. And it squirted and, out and the back of the because end zone for that's a kicking, Remember, that's a kicking ball now. That's not the, you know, the ball. I that got they, it. So that ball slick. Okay, this is about to be 14 all at halftime. And, half, and it's right. going to feel very differently different. than 14 to 9 Correct. felt. And those five points could have really mattered yes. at the end of the game because they lost by three. three. Yep. So the turning point of the game featured neither quarterback to me. Oh, yeah, right? yeah. Yo, no. No, well, no, no, no. Well, hey, Skip. So let me ask you a question. Okay, let's just say for the sake of argument, they got that. Do you have doubts that my homeboy is not going to take this ball and go down the field and get a field goal or a touchdown if that's what he needs? Did you see? Mm. Because what had happened, Skip, they had lost Jordan, Cam Jordan, and they had lost Hendrickson. So now... The pressure that they were getting generating from those edges is not going to be the same. I'm going to give Patrick Mahomes a compliment. I'm going to compare him to Brett Favre in, in Brett's first five years starting in Green Bay. What was the book on Brett Favre around the league? My Cowboys played them, it seemed like, every year in some big do-or-die game. Mm -hmm. And the book in the locker room going into the game was... He will throw you two, but you have to be ready to catch them because they're going to come <laughs> hard and they're going to come with high velocity and they're going to come from right. arm angles you're not expecting. You mm -hmm. just have to be ready to catch them. So there was a play that caught my eye. Late in the ball game, boy. It's, you know, it's 448 left in the third quarter. It's, it's a 21-15 game at this point. It's a third and nine play from the 42. He's throwing the hard one. That's the only play you're talking about. it to Marcus Williams. Marcus, I mean, this is like as easy an interception as Marcus uh -huh. Williams will ever get. I don't Marcus. Know, Skip, I don't even know what, he, I don't know what Mahomes saw. Okay, well, what are you doing? Okay, there are always a couple of those a game against Mahomes. You just have to catch the football. Yeah. If you catch it, it might change the whole momentum because it looked like you could have run for yeah. 20 yards. The thing was, and also, Skip, you, you're absolutely right. Playing Brett Favre, there's, there's two, the, 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 the book on him is, you're absolutely right, that he's going to throw you a few now. We just got to make sure we catch him. Mm -hmm. But also, people are like, you can't blitz him. You can't blitz Brett Favre because he'll run or he's going to make plays. Greg Robinson, who was our defense coordinator in Super Bowl, said, mm -hmm. Bull Jive, you can't blitz him. We're going to blitz him. Mm. And we did. And we got him. I think we got him three times. We forced a fumble. But that's what you got to do, Skip. 
People's like, well, you can't blitz him, Skip. If you just let him sit back there, Skip, it's damned if you dare. It's, it's, I guess it's death by a thousand paper cuts, mm -hmm. or it's a slow death. Because you can't just let him, Skip, you can't let him sit back there in the pocket. Mm -hmm. You can't. I mean, even when you were heating him up, I've never, and the, the, um, they showed the graphic, he was pressured on four, over 40%. That's the most in his NFL career. The most to this point he's ever been pressured. And look what he did mm -hmm. against that. Very few quarterbacks can get pressured more than any point in time in their career and have numbers like he put up, Skip. Mm. That was an MVP performance. Mm. And I'm going to be shocked because guess who? Now, you just saw Tom Brady throw for 390 against the Falcons. Mm. What do you think my homeboy is going to do? Well, he threw for 254 yesterday, which isn't exactly taking the roof how off many, the how dome. Many, how many did Tom Brady throw for against that same defense? Well, he got in thrown into the fire in game number no, 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 one no, no, with no, no. a brand I'm new team. I'm talking about four weeks ago. Mm. Against, uh, when they're 38 he was horrible. No, no, no. I don't want to know. But did, mm. did he throw for more than 254? Mm. Did he have more than three touchdowns? Mm. Did they win or lose the game? Did Drew Brees came <laughs> come off uh, 11 fractured ribs against Tom uh, Brady? No. When did Drew Brees start rushing the Drew quarterback? Brees, Drew Brees went up and down the field like nobody he was playing defense. Okay, then why didn't Tom Brady go up and down the field? Mm. Uh, that's what I'm, talking about. I'm talking about Tom Brady against that defense because I'm comparing Mahomes against that mm. defense and Tom Brady against the defense. All so, I know is Tom Brady went up and down the field against Kansas City's defense. Woo. Uh, more than what Kansas City did against your defense? Mm. In the first quarter, that was all Kansas uh, City, but the last three quarters belonged who won the game? to Tom Brady. Who won the game? It was by three. You won it just because we couldn't get the ball back. Why you couldn't? 4-10 left, when, cut it to three, couldn't get the ball back I, for I wanna, four minutes I want to know seconds. why you didn't do anything in the first half, because there's a reoccurring theme. You keep creating a monster, mm. you kill the monster, and then you want to be the hero. Mm. I want to know why in the first half. I don't really get that analogy. Yes, you do. But you I do don't. get I You don't. want credit for something that you're creating. Mm. Why do you keep putting us in this hole? You said, Skip, okay, Kansas City score. Kansas City kicks the ball off to Tampa. Mm -hmm. What did Tom Brady do? Three and out. Okay, we get the ball back. They score again. They kick the ball up to Tampa. Ty Tyreek Hill had 203 receiving yards I, I in the get, first quarter. Okay, what did, the first quarter. What did How Tom, do you overcome that? Easy. Tom Brady has the oh, ball. Oh, so you want him to throw for 203 in the first quarter. Why not? That's oh, the goat. Uh, you told me that's the goat. He's mm -hmm. the best quarterback. You told me he's the best. Mm -hmm. He's be You told me he's better than Rodgers. You and pro football focus had him for the first eight, eight weeks. Better than Rodgers and Mahomes. You know what? It's a long year. And Tom Brady is rounding into form, and I'm I, maybe Mahomes is rounding out of form. Really? I'm not sure about I, this. Ooh, I showed you know how, how do you not cover a spread for six straight games if you're Patrick Mahomes boy? Okay, if you don't mind me asking, can you tell mm. the people at home their record in those six mm. straight games? Well, they've been winning a lot of them. <laughs> a lot of all of them. Yeah. Winning so, a lot of them. Mm. I, I just want to know, Skip. What you know? You do realize he's gonna throw for five thousand, right? Mm. He's gonna throw for five thousand, mm. and guess what else he's gonna do, Skip? Mm. He's gonna have forty touchdowns. Mm. Then he's gonna be the first. He's gonna be the first guy to have two five thousand forty touchdown seasons. Really? And it's in year four. Mm. Brady had a fifty. Mm. Oh, he already had a fifth year, mm. too. Mm. He did that year, too. Mm. He said Brady. He said mm. Brady had to wait like nine years to do that. Mm. He said, man, I did that thing, but I did that way back, way mm. back. When I was like two years old when I did yeah, that. Yeah, but he was lucky to win a Super Bowl, and Tom's got six out of nine Ooh. and should have had seven and eight out and of he, nine. And he either could have been three out of six or four out of five. So don't do that, Skip. Let's talk about right I'm now. doing it. Is he not the best quarterback in football, Skip? Mm. No mercy. Hey, Undisputed listeners, it's Charlotte Wilder here to tell you about my new podcast with Mark Titus called The People Sports Podcast. It comes out every Thursday, and Mark and I take one of the big stories of the week, and then we go off on tangents you never saw coming. This might mean that we start talking about the Dodgers winning the World Series and end up wondering if Knicks fans deserve happiness, or begin with LeBron's greatness and end up drafting our ultimate beer league softball team made up of old athletes. Whatever it is, the only rule of the show is that it has to be fun and funny because these days we can all use as many laughs as we can get. So check it out wherever you get your podcasts and come down weird sports rabbit holes with us. We can't wait to have you. No mercy. Can't wait to hear what you guys thought about this one. Jalen Hurts racked up 401 total yards to go along with four total touchdowns against the Cardinals yesterday. Hurts went blow for blow against Kyler Murray, who also had over 400 yards and four total touchdowns. Hurts and the Eagles had an opportunity at the end of the game, but the drive stalled at the Cardinals' 31-yard line, and they ended up losing 26 to 33. So, Shannon, please give Jalen Hurts a letter grade for his performance. Skip, I thought he played really well. I'm gonna give him a B. Um, 
I'm surprised. I'm shocked with how well he's playing, how well he threw the football. I knew he had legs, um, but he played unbelievable um, given the circumstances. But I think that the, 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 the pressure is kind of, you know, <clears throat> I think once you come in and he knows that I'm going to finish the season. I, I wish Doug Peterson stop with this foolishness, this charade, this game he's trying to play. Well, I haven't made up my mind who's going to start, have named a starter for next week. Skip, everybody knows Jalen Hurts is going to start for the remainder of the season unless something unforeseen were to happen to him in the course of the game. Mm. So can he just stop and just says, okay, Jalen's our starter? Because if you, if you just say Jalen's our starter for the rest of the season, yep. people will stop asking you these questions and you'll stop looking dumb when you say, well, we haven't named a starter yet. Mm. That was, that be being said, Jalen Hurst is throwing the ball unbelievable, Skip. Um, now, this game was close. Shouldn't have been this close. If Arizona doesn't turn the ball over, they've heard three or four turnovers. Kyler Murray was dealing. He threw a ball. He threw a pick in the end zone. I'm like, Kyler, what did you see? I, think, Skip, I, 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 I actually think <laughs> he tried to stop the throw. I, I mean, yeah, I, yeah, I think yeah, he was yeah, like yeah. at the last second he said <laughs> no and it fluttered. <laughs> and I'm like, because you're going to get points out of that. Who knows? You might yep. get a touchdown. But he, you're right. If Jenny Red, he was going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. But you can't have three turnovers and two inside the 10-yard line. Because, Skip, you get 500 yards, you have 500 yards. Your quarterback throws for 406. You have 100. You're like, man, this is whitewashing. But when you turn the ball over, you lead them around, lead, let a team hang around, hang around, and then they had an opportunity to either get that Hail Mary and go for two to beat you or kick the field goal, kick the PAT, and take your butt in overtime. Mm. But give Jalen Hurts, I gave him a B skip because I thought he played extremely well, and he's playing better, better than I thought he would play. Mm. So help me out here. Yes. How on earth could you give this young man a B for that performance? You can't get no A when you lose. Hmm. How could he do much more than he did yesterday to put them in position to win a game they had no business being in in the first place? No, it's like, it's, it's Skip, it's like a quarterback. You put him in position, but if the field goal kicker misses it, the quarterback takes the L. Mm. Your objective is not to put him in position. Your objective is to win. Mm. Now, he didn't do that. So, Skip, I gave him a B. I mean, he was 24-44, uh, 333. They got to him and sacked him six times, so, which is surprising. But, you know, a scrambler skip, a lot of times they can run themselves out of trouble when they can run themselves into trouble. Mm -hmm. So Vance Joseph did a great job, but this game would have could have been, they skipped him up 16 nothing, And then the turnovers happened inside the 10-yard line. So give, give the Eagles defense credit for creating those turnovers. But Jalen Hurts, Skip, I'm surprised with how well he's playing. Mm -hmm. Kudos to that young man. So if you don't mind, I'm going to take one kudo because I predicted the day they took him that he would play better and perform better than Carson Wentz. And I hate to say this, but after yesterday, I'm ready to conclude it's over in Philadelphia for your man Carson Wentz. I know there are conflicting reports about Carson wants out. No, Carson wants to stay. And no conflicting reports, Skip. He was the starter for, since he's been there. He got benched. Hell, now nah, you don't want to be a backup, and rightfully so. I agree with but that. But you put yourself in that situation for them, for us to be here. You got to take, at some point in time, you got to take some accountability, Carson. Now, I get it. I don't think Doug Peterson has called the greatest of games. Your offensive line, I mean, Alshon making plays that he hadn't made since that Super Bowl season. I'll give you credit. The guys around him are playing better. Yep. They're playing, but don't try to absorb yourself of this, of this uh, of blame here now. Mm. You got some blame at your feet too, Carson Wentz. Mm. Okay, so all of a sudden after a quarter, Jalen Hurts is down 16 to nothing mm -hmm. on the road against a defense that absolutely terrorized Daniel Jones and Colt McCoy up at New York at the Giants mm -hmm. last week. And he's under fire. He's going to get sacked six total times in the game. And yet in the second quarter, in a shock to me, I told you he can throw the football. I'm not, I'm not saying he's Patrick Mahomes or Aaron Rodgers or Tom Brady for sure, but, but he is a very good thrower of the football. I saw it last year when he threw 32 touchdown passes under Lincoln Riley's tutelage, obviously, coming after, obviously, Baker and Kyler. And, and this is the quarterback maker, Lincoln Riley. Yep. And he made him into a pure thrower of the football, unlike he was under Lane Kiffin at Alabama. Mm -hmm. 
So all of a sudden, I see the Oklahoma Jalen Hurst start taking over in the second half. I mean, second quarter, and he's facing a third and twenty from the thirty-two yard yeah, line. Yeah, I'm a little bit. Like, like, well, help me out here. How I'm do you pull it. this one off? I've never heard of this guy, Quez Watkins. You talk about no. who, who is he throwing to? And all of a sudden, Quez gets loose, and it's a touchdown. And I'm saying, who are you, and where did you come from? If Kim, okay. can you could somebody, what, Drake, what, hold on, Kirkpatrick. I, I, I don't what know. What are you doing? I don't know. I mean, you standing back there dancing. And bro, you got attacked. You're the forest now. Okay. And you never dip inside and give up the sideline. The pursuit is coming. Okay. You turn him back inside. And then he throws two shorter touchdown passes Greg to Ward Greg Jr. Ward Jr., who I've told you I like since he was a quarterback at Houston. But he hits him twice. This is all in the second quarter. So he ends up throwing three. That's a That's a strike right there. He's got some velocity to him. He has an above-average arm, and that's a sweet throw. That is. Fight. That's a very good, and, very good throw. Okay, and there you go. Three touchdown passes in the second quarter, and, and all of a sudden you go to halftime, and you're only down 26 to 20. And I'm thinking, how did you do that? And then here we go. Kyler throws his interception that you talked about into the end zone. Epps gets it because he's like the primary receiver on the play. And here comes Jalen back. And if we could see fourth and six from the Arizona 46, this is in the third quarter. This is on a drive to tie the score at 26. Fourth and six, that's what he does. He yes. takes off running. I told you it's an effortless glide that's going quicker and faster than you think it is. And here's the touchdown. Now, that's just some heart and some guts and mm -hmm. some strength because he is weight room strong. That's squat strong right there. And, 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 that's and, and, squat 500 pounds strong. Skip, did they tie the game and did the PAT, the kicker miss he it? He missed it. Okay, with that. that, that, that just, Skip, that's no, what you know it's not the, today. It the heart out of you. It, it, it takes does. The life it does. And, and I will tell you this. As you said, Kyler was wheeling and dealing <laughs> yesterday did. because the throw he made to D-Hop to win this game 33-26 to 26, this throw, if we could see it, it, it's just, it's as sweet a throw and catch as you're going to see. Like, like that's just, it, it's I mean, Hobbs is going to the ground. He got I know, it and one. he's got it in one hand. <laughs> I mean, look look at the placement of this ball. Could it be any better? Nope. And, and it's a really good quick catch because you got to get your hands up fast because it's got some mustard on it. It was such a great throw. I mean, hey, okay. hey Skip, that, the guy's that's like the too good. Skip, that's you too can't, good. There's nothing you can do. Nope. I mean, you might tell the guy to turn around, <laughs> but, but if he turns his head by the time I, I he looks for the ball, the ball's going to be in, in Hobbs' hands. Okay, so now we get down to the last two series. Mm -hmm. And Jalen gets it down to a third and 21, and he's got two throws to Dallas Goddard in the end zone, and he threw two sweet balls yeah. to Dallas Goddard. This is the second to last series. And if we could see these two throws... Dallas Goddard has got his hands up on the football, and he's about 6'6", six, six, and, th oh, that's the first one that's underneath. I, I thought that was the one that yeah. should have been caught. Yes. You, you just got to come down with that, and then the second one, he hits him right up in the hands, and it, it was just high traffic, lots of hands up on the ball, but I thought maybe he might snatch it. It's, it's a really good throw to the pinpoint that it could have been caught. Both of them very catchable throws. This is still the second one again. It just hits him right in the hands. You just got to come down yeah. with it. And, and quick point, and I don't want to make too much of this, but how bad a spot are Dallas Goddard and Zach Ertz in? They're like best friends with Carson Wentz. Would you tell me, if you're tied in playing for a quarterback you love, not that this would ever happen to John Elway, right. but how much are your emotions mixed? Oh. Like, like, is your heart completely in it? Yeah. Because you know if you go up and snatch one and make a great grab, it, it could just do in your, your <laughs> best buddy, right? <laughs> Bro, you, like, you, hey. you, you hunt with him, you fish with him, and, and, and you're going to do him in? And guess what, Skip? I'm still going to be hunting and fishing, but I'm going to be winning with the other guy. Okay, well, there you go. <laughs> but is that is that what your heart is? I don't yeah, know. Skip, I'm trying to win the game. I got it. I got okay, it. I have, and I'm I hope you're real. right. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying so, to win the so game. So then we go to the last series, and these are just Hail Marys. This is from the 31-yard line. But they were great throws, Skip. The Hail Marys? Yeah. The, the, the last two. Yeah. These, these are after that, yeah. the ones we just nice, saw. Nice, soft touch. Not he gave his guys a chance, because sometimes, Skip, we see guys throw the ball out the end zone. So, you know, you can't do this now. Yeah. You want to, you want the ball well, more the to the middle, Skip, middle, so that I, way, I if it carries to the back, it's still in yeah. the end zone. Now, this is perfect. This is a good one. Yeah. That's perfect. Okay, so that is to tie or maybe even win the game. Right. And what I'm saying is, if I have to give this young man a letter grade, I'm going to put it in this perspective. Remember, he's starting his second game mm -hmm. on the road, 
and against a, a young star player who started his 30th game. That was mm -hmm. Kyler's 30th start in the National yeah. Football League. So I'll, I'll give you this. He lost the game, so I'll go A- minus for Jalen Hurts, but I can't go down into the Bs because he played better than a B yesterday. He played. He, he, he He's throwing the ball, but Kyler was. Yeah. If Man, Kyler would have got an A++. plus <sighs> plus. If he don't, if he don't turn, if he don't throw that interception in the end zone, because and, I, and he lost one fumble. Yeah, that, that's I don't know if I've ever seen him play better than that in his professional career. Now, obviously, Skip, we've seen him have some 400 yards total offensive days when he was in college, but the NFL level, the way he threw the yeah. ball yesterday. Now, you got D Hop and Fitz made a catch for him, and D Hopkins was just. When all else fails, Skip, I'm going to D-Hop. Yeah, I'm going to D-Hop. That's how valuable he is. He's changing the way they play offensive football. Can you believe Houston traded him for no, a second? No, I cannot. <laughs> it changed the life of both teams. It, it did. did. So I loved what Doug Peterson summed it up with. He's, he was talking about Jalen. He said, I thought he had great poise, great leadership, played obviously physically and mentally tough. He gave us an opportunity to win today. Yep. And you can't ask more from a, a, a young quarterback, a rookie quarterback thrown into the fire than that. But I will say this, Skip. The one thing that I did see, now maybe it's early, it's only the second start, but he seemed to be un, un, unimpacted, unaffected by the sacks. I mean, he took six. That's a lot of sacks. Most guys take that many sacks. Skip, they ain't not throwing the ball the way this kid was throwing the ball late in the ball yeah, game. And a couple of them, he got rocked. Yeah. Yeah. No, and, I, and so, give it, you know, you see Carson Wentz, they get, and the, the book on Carson, if we can get to him early. I agree. We got him late. N knock him off his. Yeah, his, this, this kid here yeah. seems to be unraveled, but, yeah. hey, Jalen, <laughs> you need to go ahead and shave the arm here, bro. Mm. You're going to be quarterback, they're going to catch you that motion. You now, go on so? a man, go on a man, escape that thing up, bro. Well, he is a man. <laughs> now, I'm just saying, you go ahead and shave, you can shave that. Right. You know, where you, well, you know, you can, where they sugar it now, Skip. They don't do, they don't even shave. They do sugar it. They put the thing on there, they peel it right on off. Ooh. Do you do it? I, I didn't sure think do. we'd be talking about You do? About I do. Sugaring. Who I'm, knew? Undisputed. No mercy. Baker Mayfield is keeping the Browns in the driver's seat to make the playoffs after winning 20 to 6 over the Giants last night. Baker completed 27 of 32 passes for just under 300 yards, two touchdowns, no turnovers, and he only took one sack the entire game. So, Skip, you know, you tweeted last night that you would still take Baker over Josh Allen due to contagious charisma mm -hmm. and winning intangibles. So, could you please go deeper? And number one on that list that you left out was accuracy. Oh. He's a little okay. more accurate than Josh Fair. Allen will be in this league. Josh Allen has blown me away. He, he was extraordinary on Saturday at your old stomping Browns in Denver. He just dismantled your Broncos or he what's did. left of them. He is much better than I thought he would be. You know why he did that, right? John passed him. Mm, Took Bradley maybe. Chubb. Maybe. Okay, good point. Back to Baker Mayfield. Very quietly, which is not Baker Mayfield's way, he has turned back into that quarterback that I loved after his sensational career at the University of Oklahoma. He is finally, over the last seven and now eight games, actually, eight total games, he's finally living up to what I thought he was when they took him number one overall in Cleveland. Would you believe that over the last seven games, and this is no coincidence, since Odell got hurt, I'm going to knock on wood that Odell's okay because I don't wish that upon mm -hmm. anybody. Without Odell, it clarified, it crystallized for Baker where he wasn't so Odell conscious anymore. And he started to spread the wealth. He started to get others involved in the offense. And all of a sudden, he took off and it took off. And now they're 10 and 4, obviously, in Cleveland, which it's been forever since they had that kind of a record at this stage of the, of the, the season. So over the previous seven games going into yesterday, Pro Football Focus graded Baker as the fourth best quarterback in the whole league. That's behind Mahomes, Rodgers, and it was Deshaun. Mm -hmm. But yesterday, Baker Mayfield, last night, had the best QBR of the weekend, 98.3. He picked the Giants to pieces. You can say, well, it's just the Giants. But at one point, you started to think that the Giants they defense had, was they, coming yeah. together, right? But I think what you call him is out. Uh, Bradbury, one of their best he corners. Is. He was out last night. But Baker was extraordinary He was dealing. Night. He was dealing with velocity and confidence that I haven't seen him be able to deal with in Cleveland because there's been no continuity, there's been no stability. And he finally has... Mm -hmm a real coach. 
He finally has somebody he listens to and trusts because it went from Hugh Jackson to Freddie Kay. We know about it was just one thing. It was chaos mm -hmm. at the top at Cleveland. And all of a sudden, with a Kevin Stefanski, who's, who's a guy who's even keel, who, who knows how to call a game and how to pr prepare for a game, strategize for a game, Baker's been put back into a comfort zone in which he can operate. You have to move him. He is more athletic than he looks. He likes to throw on the run. And when you get him out of the pocket occasionally, all of a sudden it starts to help what he can do in the pocket. And from nine, uh, 98 QBR, that's going to launch him up one more peg, I'm pretty sure, past Deshaun. So I, I'm going to say over the uh, eight-game sample size, which is a pretty good chunk of the season, that's half the season, half the games played, he will be graded as the third best quarterback in the league. Well, that, that means he's back on track. But that, let me ask you a question, though, Skip. Graded the third best as a playing as opposed to being as playing the third best. Do you believe he's playing better? Not graded better. Is he playing better than Josh Allen? Yeah. Look look what he's done over those eight games. Fifteen touchdowns to two interceptions. Wow. Skip, that, that's hard to match. Skip, when you look at Josh Allen, it's hard for me to believe that if they were to redraft and we know exactly what we know now, he's going first. He's probably going to go first over. Do, do, do you remember there were three or four games early this year when people were all over him because he hasn't been accurate? Skip, he has 4,000 yards passing, almost, 300 yard, almost 400 yards on the ground. Here's the games they've lost at Tennessee to Mahomes, D-Hop, Hail Mary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you see he's getting better, okay? His completion percentage went up in year two to 6%. It's gone up 10% in his third year. So what they've done, they've done a great job of drafting around him. When they went and got him a true number one in Stephon Diggs. They did. Skip, he's a different animal mm -hmm. now. So now you got those tight ends that can catch the ball. And Skip, old Measley Beasley. I hit it, old Measley Beasley. He rapping. He up there, uh, he up there, Buffalo doing his thing. Y'all didn't want him. I you didn't want me. Oh, yeah, yeah, he still got that. He, he still Doesn't, got Yeah, yeah. Mm, who knew? You didn't want old Measley mm, Beasley. No. Nope. Well, want, he was I too want, expensive. No, no, no. He went to. Yeah. For $5 million, look what he He's man about they to have a five yard season. We're, we're good. We, we've got three pretty good ones right yeah, now. They, 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 old, uh, old Measley Beasley. I think we have three better than Measley Beasley. Skip. Thank you. Give Baker credit. He played unbelievable last night. Um, they, uh, Jarvis made some unbelievable catches for him. He made he he had Njoku wide open in the front of the end zone and went to the tough of throw to to Landry, who the guy was draped on who yep. was draped on him. Mm -hmm. But Skip Josh Allen to me has shown he's the better quarterback. Uh, he can do everything Baker can do. He has better legs. He has a bigger arm. He's throwing the ball with the same completion percentage. He has more touchdowns, more rushing. So I don't I don't see the scenario in which if you look at it by any metric where you can say Baker Mayfield is outplaying mm. Josh Allen. I don't uh, know. I'll, I'll take his last eight games over Josh Allen. Skip, I will. I mean, Baker Baker has some bad losses on his resume. I mean, you look at okay. blown out first game by the Ravens, okay. blown out by the Steelers. Okay, lost these to the are Raiders. all pre-Odell injury. Skip, let me, let me look here. I'm, try, I'm trying to figure out Baker Odell. What has happened, what it clarified is that Baker's the man. You see, there's a... There's a, there's a uh, 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 Something going on here. As long as Odell is in Cleveland, Baker Mayfield is never going to be bigger than Odell. He's never going to be. I don't care. He's the quarterback. It's, it's one of the few occasions, Skip, Maybe. that the receiver is bigger than the quarterback. All, although, who had the more national TV commercials? But he has the more national TV commercials. But which guy has the, the signature shoe with Nike? Which guy is best boys with Drake? Which guy is in, which guy is the models and everybody old guys tweeting? Mm -hmm. LeBron and this one and that with the name well, I, guys. I buy that. So now what you see, what, what we see now is that it's Baker's show. Jarvis is an unbelievable receiver, but he's not Odell as far as nope. like you say, gravity. Aura. Aura. Mm -hmm. Mystique. Mystique. I agree. I agree. So now it's clarified. Baker's and I, the guy. And I also believe that Baker was in awe of Odell on and off the field and wanted to run with him, socialize with him. I don't know, Skip. I, I, I just say I think Baker, Baker, like, look, Baker was the guy in Oklahoma. Heisman Trophy winner and rightfully so. He comes the number one overall draft pick and he's the toast of the town in Cleveland. And then Odell comes. 
And now we ain't talk about the toast of the time. We talk about Odell. They got Odell. They got Odell out of there. Odell, Odell, Odell. You make it like, hold on, wait a minute. I want the Heisman. I'm the one to pick. Mm -hmm. What y'all talking about Odell? He coming yeah, to, but he, I, he he coming to me. He loved him. He loved him. There was no animosity there. I never sensed an ounce I, of I just, I, I just think the thing is, Skip, when you did look, quarterbacks have, I don't, and, I, and I've said this before, and, and having played 14 years and been around, quarterbacks have the largest of the egos of any of the players. They just do the best job of hiding it. Wide receivers can't hide it. <laughs> Quarterbacks can't hide it, Skip. The, 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 their personality is going to be on full display. But quarterbacks have been coached. Aaron Rodgers is starting to let his seep out a little bit. Aaron said, I don't care. Aaron sit back there, have a little drink up there, say, you know, hey, yep. they stole a couple of them MVPs for me. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm playing unbelievable, yada, yada, yada. Yep. But I just think the thing is, and I, and I think it's going to be best if Odell moves on. Mm. It hadn't worked out. We can, I, I think it's fair. Mm -hmm. it, I, it doesn't matter whose fault it was. It never meshed with Odell in Cleveland. And it's okay, Skip. It didn't work. Cleveland tried. Mm. They tried to get a, a Baker some talent, yep. and it didn't work. But I'm taking Josh Allen okay. over Baker. Well, let Mayfield. me summarize this for you. I believe this has come down for most people, maybe even you, subliminally to a popularity contest. Yeah. Josh Allen is new. He's refreshing. He's pure. He's untainted. He's a good guy <laughs> up there in Buffalo, New York. And yet, I, I remind you, he's had the same head coach the whole way, same yeah. coordinator mm -hmm. the whole way. Meanwhile, what has Baker done? Against my advice, for sure, my two cents from a distance, he, he amps up the progressive commercials. Now they are every other commercial, and it seems like I see a new one every other week. And it has made him not likable. It has turned a lot of people against him because he is hot, doggy, arrogant. Right. When, when he's front-running, he will front-run. <laughs> I got it. I think but that's, that's part of the Baker package. You mentioned Stefanski and his calm demeanor. Is that something with the West Coast? Because you look at LaFleur. You look at yep. his demeanor. You look at Andy Reid on the sideline. You look at Kyle Shanahan. You look at Gary Kubiak when he comes. Kevin, they ain't no, no, that rah, rah, all mm -hmm. they just like, hey. Okay. And I think it's done. I think it's, but they let Baker be Baker. Okay. And but Josh Allen, running. a lot of people have gravitated to him because he's far more likable than Baker is. He's because more mortality, you, too, and well, he's better right now. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, I think so. No, I, I'm, I'm talking about charismatic leadership, contagious charisma, Baker is unbelievable. Well, I saw it at Oklahoma. He took a team that was not that talented. And you, think Baker, to, you think Baker's going to make the Pro Bowl? I don't know. I mean, you, he had such a bad start to the year with Odell. I doubt it. I, I think it's probably going to be Mahomes, Josh Allen, and between Tannehill and Lamar. Okay. Well, you have written off Baker. Maybe as Phillip a, Rivers. You, you have written him off as a game manager and a front runner. And I think last night he showed you they threw the ball to run the ball. Yeah. Right? They yeah. threw it first. And then and I think the thing was, Skip, they dropped that safety down in the box yep. to try to contain the run. Baker was throwing a lot of one-on-one -on -one guys. Make, but yep. give him, Skip, I'm going to give him credit for what he did. It's like, you know, we grade, you know, you don't get, I don't get grade you one test and you make 100. And that means you get 100 for the rest of your test you mm. take. You take a test every week and I'm going to grade you accordingly. Mm. Last week, uh, last night, he, pay, oh, did you know they placed the Cowboys out of that game? Hmm? Did, it, did oh. you know they placed the Cowboys out of that game? You're yeah, they should that have. Up. You're the Cowboys would have right would right outrated right that game. No, 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 no. Cowboys lit it up. Oh, yesterday. shake it, make, it shake it, make it, prime time. Yeah, Cowboys, Cowboys would have set some record yesterday. They would have set no record. <laughs> they are always must watch. You know y'all losing Canada. prime time. You know time you're skills. watching the Cowboys. Um, no mercy. The Patriots came up short against the Dolphins, 22 to 12, and the loss officially put an end to any chances New England could make the playoffs now that they've dropped to six and eight. It's the first time Bill Belichick and the Patriots will not make the postseason since the 2008 season. So, Shannon, how much does missing the playoffs this year hurt Belichick's legacy? None. You can miss the playoffs for the next five years. Coach Belichick's legacy is set in stone. Um, he's reached nine Super Bowls. He's won six. Um, what he's done, I mean, it depends on how long he coached. There's an outside chance, Skip. He might could catch uh, Coach Shula. Now, I don't know if he wants to put that kind of time in, but I think 300 wins is is, a, is a really an outside chance. I think he can get to 300 fairly easily. But, Skip, when he got six, when you figure he got six wins out of his roster, hell, he should be in the Coach of the Year consideration. Considering all the opt-outs, Stephon Gilmore has been in and out of the lineup all year. Cam um, has been ineffective, new system. Um, he get, got COVID, missed some games. And, and what we've seen, Skip, we've seen some guys struggle 
uh, early on coming back from COVID. We saw Miles Garrett get it, and he hadn't. He was. He's not the same pass rusher that he was before he got it. Uh, we saw Cam. Cam has struggled coming back from that. Lamar says we saw Lamar cramped up uh, the other night. And so for me, Skip, look, this doesn't prove anything. This proved that Tom Brady was smart to leave, knowing that he did not have the. Skip, getting to the play, when, when New England is not about getting to the playoffs. Yeah, it had been good. We had something to talk about. But when you've accomplished what they've accomplished, the playoffs is not the, is not the standard. The standard is the Super Bowl. And Tom knew with the talent that I have on this roster, even if I'm historically great, I can't take it to the Super Bowl. I can't win. I can't beat the teams. I can't beat Tennessee. I can't beat uh, uh, Mahomes with this roster. So he went and got him a ta more talented roster that he feels gives him a better chance to get to the ultimate game and win it. Mm. So for me, Skip, this does nothing. Does nothing to tank Coach Belichick's mm. legacy. Hell, I'm surprised he won six games. Considering all the opt out, I'm considering the the lack of talent, and it's his fault now. He 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 shop all the groceries. So the dish that it turned out, Skip, that is the mess that it that it tastes like, he cooked it. But you did predict he would win this division. Yes, yes. Okay. I did not. I did not predict Buffalo. To take off like they took off, I knew the Jets was gonna be the Jets, and Miami has surprised me with how well with how well they played. Mm. And we, I mean, we saw Miami trending, but I didn't. I, I thought they were still. I thought year three would be the year that they make the series playoff run. Um, but I think the Ravens are gonna get that final playoff mm. spot, and I'll be right. Mm. You'll be right about what? I think the Ravens. Uh, I, yeah. I think the Dolphins are gonna miss the playoffs this year. I think the Ravens oh. will win their last two games. Yeah. I think they'll beat. I think they got the Giants, and mm -hmm. then they got somebody the fairly it's, easy. It's easy. Yeah. They got the easiest closing. Season. Right. Yeah. So, I, and I believe they'll they'll get that spot over over the Dolphins. Okay. Back to your statement that you opened with. If Bill Belichick were to miss the playoffs for five straight years, then the NFL world would conclude that Brady was 90% of the dynasty, and that would ruin Bill Belichick's legacy. No. Well, it would in his mind. It would in, in most people's minds that, well, Brady made you, which is I, what I thought from the start. Well, well, well people will say, well, if, if Belichick had the roster in Tampa, they wouldn't have lost four games. They'd be they'd have lost maybe one game, two tops, if he had that roster. Well, look at this roster. H how did he improve it? That's what, that's okay. what I'm saying, Skip. He shot for the grocery, so the meal that the the dish that's being prepared, he prepared it. Okay. And speaking of missing the playoffs for the next five years, I think it's a distinct possibility because he doesn't have a quarterback. Yeah. Can Cam bounce back from this? It's, it's been pretty miserable, all yeah. told. Mm -hmm. the, the, if you look at the whole body of work, and I give you COVID, I give you lack of, like Tom Brady somewhere today is saying, I, I, I told I you. I know, I know exactly <laughs> how he feels. I told you so. But, but Cam now in QBR ranks 29th out of 32 quarterbacks. It's, it's 45, five points below average. He's thrown five touchdown passes to 10 interceptions. He has run for 11 rushing touchdowns, right. which is very good. Yeah. I mean, he's had a couple of moments in the sun where he ran with yeah. the ball early, but you were the first to say, well, you can't keep that up. No. Okay. And he's had a couple of games, Skip, where he's thrown for 397 against what? The uh, uh, Seattle. He had another 379 against somebody. So he's had flashes where it's reminded you, oh, man, okay. And then you have some other games. You see the game in Denver, and you see the games are under 100 yards pass, and you're like, well, damn, Cam. Mm. And then last week, as we well know, all too well, he had one potential star receiver in Nikhil Harry, picked late in the first round, only first-round draft pick at receiver by Bill Belichick since he's been in New England. Mm -hmm. And Nikhil's trainer dumped it all on Cam, saying it's basically, you know, it's his fault right. that my guy is not catching a lot of balls. Right. right? Yes. Okay, so you got that working against you. And then you go to Miami, and the defense that's been pretty good much of the year, it gave up 250 yards rushing to the Dolphins. Yeah! 250 yards rushing. What, what is that about? And all of a sudden, they lose Stephon Gilmore, and I don't know the end of it. I hope I'm going to knock on wood for him. Oh, he, but he, it looked, he's going to be traded. Right? Yeah, he, huh? he, I don't see a scenario. Skip, normally what the Patriots do, what we've seen them do over time, Skip, if they... 
give you money, yeah. extra money, the next year you're gone. You're gone. They're going to trade okay. you. They're it gonna looks like he's him. got a season-ending yeah. ear yeah. injury. I don't know yeah. the end it of look, it. It looked it look bad yesterday. Okay. So all of a sudden they have two games remaining. One's on Monday Night Football a week from tonight against the Bills that you're starting to love. Yeah. So are the Bills going to take their foot off the no. gas or are they going to just drive it home? You, you okay. got to. Okay. And then they wind up with the Jets at home and the way the Jets have suddenly started playing because the Jets should have beaten Oakland. I mean, the, the Las right. Vegas. But yeah, right? they should have, yeah. Okay. So maybe that's like a toss up game to me now. Man, you know, front office, you know, the, the, the high ups and the Jets, like, what are y'all doing? Okay. I'm like, yes, because we do not want to have our photo beside the, the Detroit Lions. Yeah. The only team in a 16 game schedule skip to win none of your games. Mm. I go 1 in 15. There have been some 1 in 15 teams. Mm. There have only been 1 0 in 16, and I didn't want to be 2. Mm. So we might have lost Trevor. Forget Trevor Lawrence, because there's a good chance I'm not going to be here to play with Trevor Lawrence had he had come to the Jets. Okay. So I don't care nothing about y'all. Trevor Lawrence. Well, it's funny. The team that needs Trevor Lawrence, maybe even worse than the Jets, yeah. is New England. Yes. They don't. Is it Jared Stidham next year? No. I, I just don't see it. No, no. I think he was ready to go forward with Jared this I, year. I think they're hoping that some of these quarterbacks, maybe Matt Stafford becomes maybe. available in trade, maybe. Matt Ryan becomes available. Maybe there are some of these quarterbacks, skip, big dollar guys that's going to become available. But hell, the Patriots, they got no money. Mm. <laughs> Coach Belichick said, that's why we gave Cam a million. We ain't got no money. Mm. And the crusher yesterday was Miami's top running back, Miles Gaskin, was out. Yeah. And so Salvan Ahmed, undrafted out of Washington, ran wild. He had 122, and they had, again, 250 total. Breda, Breda had yeah. uh, 86 on 12 carries. Thank you. 42 for 252. So help me out. Where are you headed? Where is the, where's the light at the end of the tunnel? I, I just don't see it. It looks dark to me. Yeah. And by the way, did you see Belichick? After the game, did you see what he wore to his media session? If we could just no, see a what, quick what shot him? of him. It's scary. I think nobody, he, he didn't want anybody to even know who he was. He's trying to hide. Go Belichick said, man. Hey, Forget hey it. you want me to wear a mask? Here's a mask. Go Belichick, Kobe Bell Man, they're like, Kobe, can you, can you, normally, Skip, you know you're on camera, can you lift your hat a little <laughs> bit so, can you, you cast in the shadow. <laughs> Kobe Belichick said, nah. Hey. <laughs> he, He's gone into witness, go witness protection. No mercy. Well, how about this, guys? Christmas Day, it's an NFL special as my Vikings, well, I hope they can respond. They take on Drew Brees and the Saints. Coverage begins at 3.30 Eastern on Fox, also available on NFL Network and streaming on Prime Video. I don't know what you're laughing about over there. Shannon. <laughs> it's Christmas Day and it's Vikings. This is, I mean, what else can I ask for? I, I'd like a win. Well, how about this? Jalen Hurts racked up 401 total yards to go along with four total touchdowns against the Cardinals yesterday. Hurts and the Eagles had an opportunity at the end of the game, but the drive stalled the Cardinals' 31-yard line and they ended up losing 26 to 33. There were conflicting reports over the weekend about now backup QB Carson Wentz. First, that he did not want to stay in Philly if he wouldn't be the long-term starter. And then a newer report saying that Wentz actually doesn't want out. Fox Sports NFL analyst Michael Vick is joining us this morning. Mike, uh, how close are you to saying that Jalen Hurts is the future for the Eagles? I'm very close and, and for a lot of different reasons. And, and because yesterday, uh, that was just a smooth performance by Jalen Hurts. And it was effortless. You know, I, I thought he did all the right things in all the right key moments at the game other than win the game. He didn't turn it over. Uh, in, in, and I, I certainly felt like he, he positioned himself. And, you know, when, when you look at a guy, you know, like Jalen Hurts and his skill set and what he brings to the table, you automatically start thinking about the future, building around him and, and you know, how the offense can potentially progress and what you can do when it. And I know if I'm thinking that way, you know, Doug Peterson has to be thinking the same. And, you know, this situation just reminds me of Dak Prescott and Tony Romo all over again for all the right reasons. And, and it, it's about progression. It's about, you know, getting better. It's about the team, you know, ultimately. And you can't win if you don't have the right guy behind center. And not to say that Carson what, wasn't the right guy. It was just, it started to look like the paint was just running a little drown the wall. And, you know, for Philadelphia Eagles fans, you know, they probably feel like they need something new. I know that's the way they feel. And, and you know, they don't give you too much time out there. And, you know, when there's some new blood like Jalen, you know, a guy who look, looks like you can build around him, 
you know, why not go for it? So I think now is a test, a telltale sign, you know, for Doug Peterson and the organization getting a good look at Jalen so they can make a decision. You know, the, the Oakland Raiders at the time, they did the same thing. They drafted Derek Carr in the second round and, and they moved forward with it. He was, he was Matt Schaub's predecessor at the time. So, you know, this is not anything new. It's not nothing we never seen before. You know, it's just the right decision at the right time being made and it's an accurate decision. So I, I like what Jalen Hurts did yesterday and I think you can just build and improve on that. It's only two games, but I'm going to go back to what you said about the Cowboys and Tony Romo situation. Romo got hurt. There's no way, no matter how bad Tony Romo would have played, would Jerry Jones have allowed Dak Prescott to get in that starting lineup skill. If Tony Romo was healthy, he well, lost. On, just on pure performance. Just on pure yeah, performance. Right, right. But for me, it's only two games, Mike. Now, I'm going to need to see him play, build upon what he's did, because those two games, have, he's played phenomenal. He beat New Orleans, um, who didn't show up defensively two weeks ago, but showed up yesterday, and they took a Herculean effort by Mahomes in order to win the game. And then, even though he was battered, he still found a way yesterday, sacked six times. He still made plays with his arms. He still made plays with his legs. So I'm going to see more of that. Um the Eagles, Skip, they just, they're basically, they would be upside down. And, I, and if, you, if you ever owned a car or home, Skip, mm -hmm. you know what that means. You own more than what it's worth. Yeah. You own cars and whip. Skip, he's due over the next three years $99.5 million. If you cut him at $60 million in dead money, you're going to have to make a decision because, Skip, I think by the third day of the new year, you have to make a decision on it because his 2022 salary mm -hmm. becomes guaranteed. 2021 will already be guaranteed. Yep. So you're going to have to make a decision here fairly quickly. Yep. This is not something where we're going to put the, you know, put the job up and mm -hmm. training camp yep. and make the best man win because at that point in time, you have to start it because there's no way in hell you're going to have a $33 million quarterback holding a clipboard. So they're going to have to make a decision, and Jalen Hurts can make that decision as easy or as difficult as he's like mm -hmm. over the next two games. Yep. Both against division opponents. Correct. At Dallas and then Washington at home. Because that's what you want to see him play with because that was the team that he have to go have to beat for the next several years. So that's definitely we want to see him graded. I would like to hark back to a word that Michael Vick used, which is the operative word when it comes to Jalen Hurts, who I watch very closely in every snap that he took at the University of Oklahoma a year ago. Mm -hmm. That word is effortless. I've tried to tell Shannon, Michael, that Jalen doesn't look like he's moving that fast because he doesn't look like he's trying that hard to be quick or fast. And I'm not saying he's the Michael Vick experience in Atlanta, but I'm just saying he, he gets past people, he gets around people, and sometimes he gets through people with sort of effortless poise. Mm -hmm. He does not turn the football over. He threw 32 touchdown passes for Lincoln Riley last year at Oklahoma, which told me he can throw it. He has learned to throw it much better than he threw it for Lane Kiffin at Alabama. He also scored 20 touchdowns a year ago at Oklahoma with his legs. And we saw in the first two games that he's played in pro football, his legs can get him out of trouble. Shannon always says, well, they can get you into trouble, too, and maybe he's going to have to learn that. Yes. But so far, so great. And I, I want to stress the degree of difficulty that he got baptized with in this league because he got thrown into the fire against the New Orleans defense a week ago that was the hottest defense in pro football. And he lived to tell about it. He shredded it. He, he didn't get sacked one time in that game, and he didn't turn it over one time, and they won. And everybody played better everywhere on both sides of the ball. The defense played better. His receivers caught better. His running back, Miles Sanders, ran better. It's, it's because of his natural-born leadership that everybody raises their level around him. Saw it at Oklahoma. I think we saw it at Alabama. Then yesterday, he gets thrown into another fire against a red-hot Arizona defense that had terrorized Daniel Jones and, to a certain degree, Colt McCoy a week ago at Giants. And he got sacked six times, and he just kept jumping right back up and saying, next and next. And he kept making plays because that's what he does. He's a natural-born leader and playmaker, 
And again, I'm going to go back to what I tweeted the day they drafted him, which shocked me, mixed my emotions because I've never liked the Eagles. But all of a sudden, I love Jalen Hurts and I still don't like the Eagles. But the point is, I tweeted, he will be better than Carson Wentz. I'm not saying he's more talented because he's not. He doesn't have a better arm than Carson. He doesn't have six feet five. He, 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 Carson can run through brick walls occasionally, but he just has a knack for guiding, leading, and playmaking that will make him a better bet at quarterback than Carson Wentz. Mike, I think you can attest to this, but when we look at quarterbacks, the thing is is that their legs can get them out of harm's way, and I say this a lot, but their legs also runs them into problems. We all look at guys and we think of mobile quarterbacks. Mike, you got sacked a lot. As a matter of fact, Randall Cunningham had the record for the most sack until David Carr broke the record. Steve McNair. Kyler, Deshaun, Russell Wilson, their mm-hmm. legs get them out of play, get them out of harm's way, let them make plays on the edge, mm-hmm. but sometimes it runs them into the sack where you're getting away on the front side and you're running into something on the back side. Or, or they think they can't escape yes. and then they can't. Run right, right into it. Yeah. Yeah. Mahomes, I mean, that's yeah. how he got right. sacked for 30 can, yards because yeah. he's like, oh, I'm going to get up yeah. out of here. No. I'm just going to retreat back no. and the guy swiped yeah. his leg and he got it. Go, Michael. So you, you know, with, with, with experience, you know, with with experience that, you know, you learn the host of that and, and when to run and when not to run it. And the more, you know, he's in the pocket and the, the presence is there, the more feel for the game he can get, the better he'll become. And so, you know, I'm not worried about that with Jalen Hurts. That That's OTA's mini, mini camp, training camp, all that'll come with repetition. And, you know, so w- with Jalen Hurts, I think Skip just hit it on the head. You know, the, it's, it's a lot of upside right there. But let, let me just shift gears to Carson Wentz real quick. I mean, Carson's going to land on his feet regardless of how this plays out. I know it's a lot of dead money. I know they got to stick with him, you know, if it all boils down to it. But, you know, when a bunch of competent people get in the room and or jump on the phone, you know, trades can be made and things can happen. And imagine Carson Wentz in a situation with a guy like Kyle Shanahan or some of the top offensive gurus in the game. That revitalizes his career and bring him back so it's not over by any stretch. That's more the reason why I say you can move forward with Jalen Hurts. It's just a new look for the Philadelphia Eagles. No mercy. Tom Brady found himself trailing the Falcons 24-7 in the third quarter before mounting a comeback. Brady and the Bucks ended up going on a 24-3 run that was capped off by a 46-yard touchdown pass to Antonio Brown. Brady finished the game with 390 yards, two touchdowns, and no turnovers. Michael Vick still with us right now. So, Mike, please, could you give Brady a letter grade for his performance yesterday? I'm going to give Tom a B plus, and that, that's the Tom I like to see. I, I like to see Tom, you know, not always, you know, in dire straight situations, but I like to see the GOAT emerge when he needs to and, and overcoming the 17-point deficit actually two times in this game really showed us that Tom still has the patience to sit in the pocket regardless of what and, and still hammer it out. You know, I, I said to myself yesterday I wanted to see all the stars shine bright. And, and I, I think they did, and it started with Tom. And, you know, even though I still don't think they're protecting him the best they should, you know, he's moving around a lot. And, and I think Tom has watched a lot of opposing quarterbacks on tape play against the defenses that he's about to face and see him moving around and, and scrambling. And, and Tom didn't have a lot of that in him yesterday, but he had some in him yesterday. And he worked the pocket, he moved, he got on the move a couple times. And I, and I thought he extended plays just a little. And it was, it was enough, but more so than anything, it was about the patience and the presence and, and, and the wherewithal to stay within the framework of the offense and the game. And, and it's easy to start just chucking balls down the field and start trying to pick up first downs and getting out of character. He didn't do that. He stayed within the framework of the offense. He played his game and, and ultimately found himself back in the game and able to win it. And, you know, it was Vince's time, Brady, making the plays he was supposed to make, and I'm going to give him a strong B. Because that was one of his best performances of the year. And and I don't think that Atlanta Falcons defense is a a, a horrible defense. You know, they're stop playing. bad at mm-hmm. times. They, they're bad at times, but they play hard. They rush the pad. They hit Tom. They rush. Sometimes they cover. Sometimes they don't. This is a divisional opponent. And I know the magnitude of that game, Shannon. That's why I say that. So it's, it's just not an easy game by any stretch. You just can't walk into Atlanta and beat him. You got to go earn it. Mm. Um, <clears throat> I'm looking at my notes. It says the Atlanta Falcons have the second worst pass defense in the NFL. What, to Tampa's? 
Huh. Mm. Let me see that video. Let me sure I'm reading that again. The Atlanta Falcons have the second worst pass defense in the NFL, naturally, to Seattle. But anyway, hmm, interesting. So let me ask you a question, Mike. If you say you grade him, you gave him a grade. So are we? So was it a two-part test? Was it an essay and multiple choice? Or we just do an essay and just multiple choice? Because I want to know what the grade you gave him for the first half, 60 yards, five first downs. Listen, I don't grade for I don't give first half and second half grades. I give, I give an overall grade for the overall performance, Shay. Okay. I mean, give me the benefit of the doubt on that, baby. I don't want to get into an issue on that. Okay. Now, look, I mean, I, I can do that because every every test I ever took, you know, it was always one grade. You know what I mean? It, it won't anything outside of that. Hold on, hold on, hold on, Mike. You took the SAT, right? You had a you had a you, 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 you right. So it was two parts, right? So you just got you just scored us like sixteen hundred. Or did you get like 800, 700 for one part, 7, 800 for the other part? I'm just trying to figure out because I took the SAT and I ain't do that well on it. But. I, got, I got points for writing my name. Oh, okay. I got points for writing my name and then I had to fake you know, it. <laughs> you know what, Skip? I will give him. You know what? I'm in a generous mood today. You know what? Criminal right around the corner. C plus. C plus, you were gonna give him a C. Right. You're gonna give him oh. an F for the first half and an A for the second oh. half. Yeah, see you. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> you know exactly how I grade you. You got the <laughs> Christmas spirit, so you give him a C+. I give him a C+. Plus. Like I said, look, Mike, did we not see Atlanta, your Atlanta team have a 29-10 lead on the Cowboys? And Dak Prescott threw for almost 500 yards and came back. We just saw the same team in that very building have a 16-point lead on, the, Carol on the, um, the Chicago Bears in the fourth quarter and blow that lead. We saw them have a six-point lead with under a minute against Detroit and blow that lead. Mike, really? Really? They just fired the head coach and the general manager. And you say they good? Before I let you go, Skip. Man, Shannon, you know, man, this is the NFL, bro. This the NFL. I, I don't care about percentages. I don't care what your rank is. When you line up on Sunday, Monday, and Thursday, this is about you and that opponent. It's about you and the opposition and what y'all do in that moment. Okay. So I don't care about what happens, mm. you know, before then. It's about what happens now. And, and look, I thought I was scared for a minute. I thought the Atlanta Falcons was about to win this so, game. I'm like, so yeah, 17 to end. And then they got us, and then Tampa okay. got a score, and then it's 24 7. I'm like, this ain't gonna end good. Okay, I'm gonna turn it, I'm gonna skip to go. But I want you, I want you to have that same energy, and I want you to have that energy. Because guess who Atlanta play next week, Mike, on Sunday? My homeboy. So when he throws for five, hey, that, so I want to see how good that defense is. That's where they go. They go to Arrowhead on Sunday. Mm. So I want Is that I, a division rival? No, 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 don't do that. Don't do that, Skip. Skip, don't do me like this. Skip, Skip said it doesn't matter. Okay. On any given Sunday, man versus man. This is the NFL. That's what Mike Vick just told me. Mm -hmm. So, my homeboy, it's your turn on Sunday. Thank you. It is now my turn. <laughs> I'm gonna give Thomas Edward Patrick Brady Jr. an A minus for yesterday because of the circumstances under which he had to dig out. Think about what happened in the first half against the division rivals, played a lot better under Raheem Morris. They should have been ahead 21 to nothing at halftime, and I was ready to write off Tampa Bay as don't belong in the playoffs, Buccaneers. I saw nothing I liked in the first half on offense or defense, while Matt Ryan went 23 of 31 for 235 yards in the first half alone. And I don't know what Brady said at halftime. I don't know what Bruce Arian said. I just know what Brady thought. He said, enough of this, you know what? And out came what the, the, the alter ego I call Psycho Tom in the third quarter. And off he went. And you could tell on that first drive in the third quarter, it's just boom, boom, boom. He was saying, not today, not even in this house a house in which he came back from 28 to three down in a Super Bowl, a house Michael Vick obviously knows, but he came back from 28 to three in a Super Bowl. No, that was with, in Houston. What's that? That was in Houston. Oh, I'm he sorry, beat the Rams in the Super Bowl. Bowl. He beat the Rams in Atlanta. Atlanta. Yeah. Okay, but, but the point is that he, he came back from, from desolation. It, it's, it's like you, you, you don't look like anywhere near a playoff team, and all of a sudden, because of your first drive in the third quarter, you, you, you whip them back into to the, sh the psychological shape of, uh-oh, 
he's doing it, so we got to do it. And the defense didn't live up right away because they let Matt Ryan go 75 yards and seven plays, as, as Michael Vick points out, and all of a sudden it's now 24 to seven. And here came Brady again, 26 yards to Mike Evans and 24 yards to Mike Evans, and then hit uh, Godwin on well, a little no. quick slant yeah. underneath uh, Mike Evans, and all of a sudden it's 24 to 14. And then here he comes again. I, I have never seen anything like Brady. I don't know that he's ever played a better second half in his life in a regular season game than he played. He threw for 320 yards. I don't care who you're throwing against. The 320 is it's it's the best second half anybody's had all year long. <laughs> I know a guy. I know a guy threw for 350, 360 in a half before it, against that defense. <laughs> and that's you know all you need to know. You know my, yeah, my guy threw for 360 like it was nothing. Lord have mercy. <laughs> I, I have never seen anything like it. And he saved them. He lifted them back from eight and six to nine and five. And all of a sudden, when the game was over, I sat back and said, you know what? That team has the potential to win this whole thing. That's what it has. Mike, let me ask you a question, Mike. Let's just say you sit around, you sit around the dinner table and you 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 eat and you with the family, and you knock your drink over. You get up, you clean it up. Are you wanting congratulations for that? You did it. You spilled that, right? So why are we congratulating Tom Brady for putting him in that 17 point hole? Because you told me that uh, Mike Vick tell hold me. Hold on, hold on. Hold on just a second, Mike. You told me like if I score a touchdown, I get to kick the ball off to you. Now it's your opportunity. You don't do anything with it. You kick the ball back off to me. I score a touchdown. So during that point in time, what was Tom Brady doing on offense, if you don't mind me asking, Mike, in the first half? I, I said a couple weeks ago, I thought it was too many three and outs and a, a lot of errant throws. And, and look, that's that's going to happen in football. It's all about can you overcome it. With the Atlanta Falcons, they got offense. I mean, Matt Ryan and 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 Calvin Ridley, those, they show up. They go, they show up every week. But Tom Brady wasn't going against the offense. I'm talking about that. You said Atlanta. You said Atlanta defense is good. I'm saying their defense and their offense is good too. And this is the reason why the Bucks was down seventeen nothing. Yeah. You get down 17 nothing, and the offense is out there. Atlanta's offense is out there scoring. That's on the Bucks' defense. That's not on Brady. Brady don't play safe. So, 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 what was, so what was Brady doing? So, so Brady didn't get an opportunity to score? sideline chilling, trying to put a, put a plan together in terms of getting back out there. So he could put no plan together in the first half, huh? Mm -hmm. No plan came so, together. So, first. Shannon, I will buy this. Okay. What you going to buy? He spilled the wine in the first half, okay. and there was none left. So okay. you know what he did in the second half? He turned water into wine. Water into wine. Water into wine. I've never seen anything okay. like okay. it before. Okay. I want oh. you to have that. Now see, now, see, Mike, you know what's going to happen. Now, my homeboy go throw for 405 touchdowns, and he's going to say the degree of difficulty. They were psychologically traumatized <laughs> from what happened the week before. That's okay. what you're going to do because you know what my homeboy is going to do. Mm. If Mike yeah, Evans had that number, no, what is Tyreek going? If if Antonio Brown run by their DBs, what you think? What you think Tyreek's going to do, Mike? So Shannon, I just have one final okay. question for you. Yes. Are you ready to admit you were wrong each of the last four years when you no. said it's time for Tom no. to take it home? It's time time to go no. home, Tom. <laughs> You're washed up. You're new alarmed. And it, right. did, did that look like a guy right. who should retire right. yesterday? If, if 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 Tom was going against New Orleans, what Patrick Mahomes, you think he'd make it out of that game? Because we saw four weeks ago when he went against New Orleans what happened, right? You said he called a timeout to kick a field goal. You was feeling sorry for him. I remember you came on here that Monday and felt sorry for Tom. <laughs> Say, I feel sorry for what he had to go through last night. That's what you uh, said, Mike. I did. <laughs> I did. That's my boy. That's my boy. No mercy. The Cowboys defense showed up big against the 49ers, creating four turnovers in the 41-33 win. Tony Pollard racked up 132 yards from scrimmage and two touchdowns with Zeke sitting out with a calf injury. With the Cowboys win and every other NFC East team losing yesterday, Dallas is now second in the division, just a game behind Washington. Michael Vick is still with us. So, Mike, I feel like I've asked you this before, but right now, who wins the yeah. NFC East? Man, look, Skip ain't going like this, and Shannon probably won't neither. Shannon probably disagree uh, regardless. But I, I'm, I'm going to say the Eagles. I'm going to say the Eagles because crazier things have happened. And while I do think we're going to beat the Cowboys this week, you know, I know the Cowboys had a good week last week. Tony Pollard ran wild, and they got some, some, some plays made on the defense, some interceptions, and it, it looked good. I really feel like, you know, we're going to beat 
the Cowboys this weekend, then we're going to beat the football team in, in, in week 17. And then, you know, however that shake up, I don't know if something's going to happen that we're going to eventually end up in. And I, I'm just looking at it like this. I got to support my squad. And there's been a lot of ups and downs, man. And I'm, you know, I might be rooting with my heart right now, but I like what I see with my team. And I think they've been playing hard. And I just, I think it's going to be a lot of letdowns come down the stretch, man. So, you know, there you go. That's my take, Jenny. Mm. Either you need to get LASIK like Skip, or you need to borrow my glasses because I I don't see that I don't see that one. You ought to see how Skip looked at me. I looked at him like, uh. I already know. I, I knew the reaction I was gonna get. <laughs> I'm gonna take Washington because I think <clears throat> I think they're gonna render this all a moot point come Sunday at about one two thirty five. Yeah. Now by two thirty five, oh, it'll be over. Everything but the shot. Oh, oh see. So yeah, we're gonna let the church time, out. It'll be over. <laughs> the only thing left is the benediction. Mm. You know what? You had a church. You been in there. You like praise. Hey, the benediction. Mm. We dismiss. <laughs> and that's when you wake up in church, right? That's when uh, <laughs> it'll get your caps. They already ordered the caps. Got mm -hmm. well, I don't know what the, the what's the logo. What's the, I guess it got W L T on the watch. I don't know. The, the watch the football team skip. I guess yep. that that's that. I'm look. I'm not gonna take a whole lot of your time, Skip. I know this your baby. You want to talk about it? I'm going. Washington will beat Carolina, and Washington will be the NFC East champ. Done. As much as I love Jalen Hurts, I am not seeing the Eagles. I don't even know if it's mathematically possible for the Eagles with that tie to, to roar back. I guess it is. But it is. Okay. All right. Damn. So the point is, it all comes down to, as I told Shannon a week ago, to unbelievably, the whole NFC East season comes down to Carolina at Washington. Who knew before the season started? Carolina at Washington. Uh, Carolina's lost eight of nine games, but I'm going to give Carolina about a 20% chance of pulling off the upset of the year, <laughs> which would vault my Cowboys, I believe, to the title and to a home playoff game. So what has Carolina done in, while losing eight of nine? They lost by one point at Minnesota, by two points to my homeboy in his home by only three points to Drew Brees and the Saints at New Orleans, and only eight to Aaron Rodgers. And I thought they were going to get back in the game the other night at Green Bay. So they are game. They will fight you. They got that old college try going under their new college coach, Matt Rule. And Teddy Bridgewater will not quit. He will keep coming at you as, as average a talent as he is. He will fight you. And he's got not one or two. He's got three receivers who can run by you and DJ Moore, Robbie Anderson, and I, Curtis Samuel is the fastest one of all, but the other two have already gone over a thousand yards. They have enough weapons that with all the pressure now on the Washington football team, knowing that they have to close this deal, starting with the home game, then they finish at Jalen. So they're at Jalen. It's already Jalen's team. So mm -hmm. I say at Jalen. So I, I think with the pressure mounting, Maybe it, it depends on, obviously, is it Dwayne Haskins? Is it Alex Smith? I, I don't really care because Alex Smith was horrible against the 49ers before he got hurt. I figure they'll rush him back in. I don't think he'll be much better than Dwayne Haskins was. I think there's a chance Carolina pulls it off. And if they do, you are in big trouble because my team has caught Fire. Skip, you, Skip, how many times have you just saw this with Romo? All you had to do was win one game. You had to go to Philly win. You win one game against the Giants for three years in a row, and you lost! My team just won the turnover battle four to nothing. <laughs> My team just put up 41 after putting up 30 the week before. Yeah. I'm exploding. Uh, okay. I've, I've sprung you back to life. You see, I, huh? I, I, I try to spare you. As you should. As you should, Skip. Yeah. As you should. Look. I know you get your hopes up. I, I mean, I used to be like that as a kid, Skip. I, you know, said I had to pull, filled out my list, mm. and they, they, they told me Santa was going to bring it. And when Christmas came, Santa, would didn't, there was nothing on that list that I requested that was up under that tree. Okay. Now, I know what you requested, but it's not up under that tree. I never requested anything. <laughs> but I still believe in Santa Claus, and I still believe in the Dallas Cowboys' chances okay. in the <laughs> NFC least. It yeah. is the least. Skip, skip. This, this is, mate, it's perfect. No, it's, it's perfect. Skip. It's, it's happening right you before know, your very eyes. You know, a part of me, a part of me really wants wants you guys to come down to the last game mm. and then you lose at the mm. end. Mm. God, that, that, ooh, the hurt, the disappointment. Mm. There's nothing like the bite. Can you imagine? He get all geeked up. And then my guy, Ray, who's on the COVID list, who will be back just he in will. time He'll be to back. hand y'all that L. Jason Garrett, offensive coordinator for the New York Giants, and, and we finish at Giants. <laughs>
We can beat the Giants. Find a way. Yeah, I, I, I trust us beating the Giants a lot more than I trust us beating Jalen right now. And Jalen's this Sunday. Well, if y'all, if it's given, if you lose, if you lose Sunday, it's over. It's over. But, but we will know because we play the late afternoon game. We will know the outcome of Washington and Carolina. But what I am anticipating is that the football team beats Carolina and the Eagles blow you guys out because you realize you don't have nothing to play for. Well, that would That's be what I anticipate, Mike. Yeah, so my very worst nightmare would be if we win out and still lose the division. That would be the worst nightmare. Why would that be worse? Because we'd lose our draft pick. We, we'd oh, tumble out eight. of the top ten. Yeah, you're already at eight right uh -huh. now. Keep winning. Okay, but if we win our last two, we'll end up at 12 or somewhere, okay. right? That's a, that's a good and it'll be like also ran. So it'll get, we'll, we'll hey, lose on so both of Skip, you do realize that somebody in the NFC East is going to end up playing Tampa or somebody from, or the Rams or somebody like that, and you're going to be one and done. Mm. Well, I, I, I'll i take a home playoff it's game. It's all about making it. Uh, Andy Dalton, he it. makes plays, makes big plays. Huh? Tampa, I hang 100 on y'all. Okay. Huh. Uh, this I thought you hated Brady. for Skip has been a absolute roller yep. coaster all -time for roller all the <laughs> Cowboy fans. Uh, Michael, always a pleasure to have you with us. We'll check in with you uh, very soon. No mercy. Guys, the Jets, while well, they shocked everyone yesterday when they got their first win of the season at the expense of the Rams in L.A., while the win avoids a winless season for the Jets, it now also gives them the second overall pick in the draft behind the Jaguars if both teams lose out the final two weeks of the season. So, Shannon, how devastating was this win actually for the Jets' future? From an organizational standpoint and a fan base standpoint, it's de de very devastating, Skip, because you possibly lose out on the opportunity to draft what you believe is a generational talent in Trevor Lawrence. But for the players, Skip, I do not want my poster beside the 08 uh, uh, Lions and the 17 Browns as 0-16. In 2020, Jets, that's not going to be on my resume. So if you look at those guys, Skip, you would have thought they won the Super Bowl. Mm. Because, the, man, that's a heavy burden. To, you're never going to forget that. Man, you mean to tell me you lost all your games? You mm. couldn't win. You're like, what? Mm. Yeah, we won one. And Sean, Sean, uh, uh, Sean McVay, he's seething. Mm. They're, they should be embarrassed. Mm. A 17-point dog. That doesn't happen very often, Skip. And that's what happens when you underestimate someone. That was a bad sign for the Rams. Yes. I've been watching a lot of Trevor Lawrence this year. I watched all of it Saturday night. He has really impressed me. He did not always impress me a year ago. He is the real deal. Yes. This is devastating <laughs> for the organization and for the fans. If I'm the owner of the Jets, GM of the Jets, I, I am rocked by this yeah. because... It cost you a future that, that could have been as bright as you could make it. Yeah. Because if you had Trevor Lawrence in the New York area, it, it, you, it could just jettison and take off. And, and you, you can build around yeah. it. And, and a lot of those players who are real happy right now would not be a part of that. Exactly. That's, that's why Skip, yeah. we wanted to win. Because yeah. I ain't going to be, even if you do get Trevor Lawrence, I'm probably not going to be a part of it. Probably so what not. do I care? Nope. It's so but he shouldn't win the Heisman, though. Angry Mac Jones, Devontae Smith should win the Heisman. Okay, we don't have enough time that. to go I there agree. yet, Shannon. That is it for Undisputed. Great stuff today, guys. We will see you tomorrow. Have a good one.